नमस्कार सुप्रभात इस विद्यानगरी के प्रांगण से इस विद्यानगरी के मंच से मैं आप सभी का हार्दिक अभिनंदन करता हूं और सभी को प्रभात काल की शुभकामनाएं देता हूं कराग्रे वसते लक्ष्मी कर मध्य सरस्वती कर मूले भज गोविंदम प्रभाते कर दर्शनम तो माँ शारदा सरस्वती की इस वंदना श्लोक के साथ हम अपने प्रोग्राम का शुरुआती आरंभ करने जा रहे हैं इट इज माई ग्रेट प्रिवलेज टू वेलकम एवरी वन ऑन द कस्टमाइज सर्टिफिकेट कोर्स इनाग्रेशन सेरेमनी ऑफ द सरफेस कोटिंग सोसाइटी टेकिंग प्लेस टूडे एट आई सी टी के वी ऑडिटोरियम मुंबई एट द आउटसेट आई वुड लाइक टू रिकॉग्नाइज अवर डिस्टिंग गेस्ट हु ऑनर एस बाई देअर प्रेजेंस टूडे रिस्पेक्टेड चीफ गेस्ट वाइस चांसलर आई सी टी मुंबई प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर ए वी पंडित गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर मिस्टर अशोक गुप्ता चेयरमैन है एम डी सकर्नी ग्रुप्स मिस्टर हरदेव सिंह एस बी प्रेसिडेंट इंडस्ट्रियल यूनिट निपॉन पेंट एंड एक्सपोर्ट्स प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ निपेसा ग्रुप सी सी एल मिस्टर अतिल पारिक वॉज ऑल्सो अवर गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर बट बिकॉज ऑफ सम माइनर इंजरी ही इज अनेबल टू ज्वाइन अ स्पेशल गेस्ट प्रोफेसर भागवत सुनील भागवत डिग्नेटरीज ऑन द डाइस फ्रेंड्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन एंड अवर डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई एम एट ए लॉस फॉर द वर्ल्ड टू एक्सप्रेस माई ग्रेटिट्यूड to each of you here today i can only think to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart it is amazing being able to stand before the galaxy of star present and share this special moment with you i thank you being a part of this special day at this very special moment it is a time for the industry to come together and share a learning and design a common agenda without any restriction of imagination prediction and assumptions to be very frankly will tell you that today we have kept the theme aqua coat water based technology for architectural paint it's a really a great challenge for us to talk about this particular subject we think water is a solvent it is very easy to make the water based paint so there are many challenges regulatory aspects are there you have to follow all regulatory aspects number one second the efflorescence you might be knowing very well so efflorescence you have to prepare a paint anti efflorescence paint efflorescence it is not related to the paint it is a construction defect when the construction is carried out with the bore water you will get the deposition of salt that is called the efflorescence so you have to make the paint to remove that efflorescence these are the two challenges as far as the water based technology is concerned so in that case the role of surfactant and some polysilicates are important to give you the proper surface tension is reduced the holes will fill up with that and polysilicates they will give you the different result so such type of coatings are necessary to make for the water based coating now regarding our society this is a purely a technical society our main agenda is to spread the education among the paint and coating fraternity we have conducted uh, so many webinars also we have a uh, our stall in pragati maidan we have stall in paint india we try to give you every month some articles also in paint india so we are just promoting this society just for the sake of education only so it's my humble request to each and every one kindly join us with society give your feedback you give your supports whatever things are there we are going to form a new group that is the surface coating expert advice there will be five or six members will be there in that panel you can ask your question answer immediately that group will be separated if anybody write a good morning tata bye bye he will be removed immediately from the group 
only you have to write a technical advice, whatever you want. So there will be a segregation, machinery part will be there, additive part will be there, formulation part will be there, construction chemical part will be there, all five, six panel will be there, you have to give your all queries and you will get answers immediately. So that group we are going to form immediately after this event. So I don't want to take much of your time. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much and namaste. Thank you, sir. So now for the convener speech, I request Mr. P.B. Deshmukh, sir, to please come forward. Good morning. Good morning. Don't worry, I will not take much time. I welcome each and everybody who are being present here. And I express my gratitude to all dignitaries and seniors that they made it convenient to attend this event. Thank you for that. Nowadays, you will find that there are many NGOs, many organizations. They are giving training programs, training programs here and there. I, have, I know few people, during their career, they never took interest in training and all that. But after retirement, because of commercial angle, they want to become a corporate trainer. That is the trend. So on this scenario, we thought there should be some organization which will give you only, which will believe in knowledge sharing, and they will give you knowledge to juniors and newcomers who wants to earn some information or technology. OK. Today's session will be related to water base, but slowly we will cover everything which comes under paint technology, like protective coatings, in general industrial, automotive, and all that. As you know, paint is not a satellite uh, technology. But because of many raw materials, it becomes very complex technology. And without experience, nobody can predict the internal actions of different raw materials on each other. And that is why it becomes a challenge. So to help you people, we have some similar minding people who are well experienced. We can help you. We have our own contacts. So we can help you to develop different trained chemists because the requirement of manpower in paint industry is also more. As I said, statistical techniques like design of experiments and all that, you cannot work for Paint or modification of formulation is okay, but to develop a new product, you have to have your concept clear. So I will only say, believe in us, believe in technology, and that is why it is said, Sraddhavan Labhate Dhyanam. Believe us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, now may I please request Dr. Uh, AJ Singh, sir, to introduce our guest of honor. Good morning, everybody. Already, I heard about uh, our society from uh, Dr. Harish Agarwal. We have been doing uh, very well in the uh, last uh, this year, and uh, yesterday we had uh, UGM also of the society, and uh, many of members they proposed again my name only for the next uh, president also. I thank all those people who have proposed my name and accepted also. So I do hope and I assure you we'll do far better than what we had done last year. Of course, we had a lot of webinars, then few training programs, then uh, as the doctor said, presentation, many of the participants, many of the organizations, we have done it. And we do hope this year we'll do much better 
for the benefit of the people in the small scale industries. The big scale industries, they can always afford a lot of uh, technical uh, personality. They have a lot of facilities. Only small scale people, they have lot limitations in all these things. Testing, raw materials, manufacturing of activities, and uh, testing of the finished product also. So we are trying to concentrate on those aspects of small industries. We'll be able to help everybody, as uh, Dr. said, WhatsApp uh, facilities also will be provided. Whoever can uh, approach us, we'll do best of our efforts to supply the pr proper information in proper time. Whatever is needed, we'll help all the small-scale industries to our best. We have organized this program for the benefit of the people in the from the small industries. And I am happy to tell you a lot of people have come from uh, places like Patinda. Gentleman, Mr. Gagan, he was coming all the way from Batinda, then from Indore, then from uh, Hyderabad, Mr. Rao. Hyderabad, Mr. Rao. So there are like people, we are having a presence of a lot of people from uh, other cities. And I welcome all those people who have come from long distance. <coughs> of course, local people also are there from Maharashtra as well as from the Bombay city. I welcome all of you. Let us have a good utilization of that day today. We'll have good programs, good uh, lectures, good speeches from the people. Wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I would like to request Dr. Harish Agrawal, sir, to please introduce our delegate, Dr. Bhagwat, sir. Professor Dr. Sunil Bhagwat is the Professor of Chemical Engineering and Dean of Academic Program at the Institute of Chemical Technology. He is also the member of Surface Coating Society, Executive Council member of the Surface Coating Society. He is in our team. Formerly, uh, UDCT, formerly it was known as a UDCT, now it is ICT. He is a former head of the Department of Chemical Engineering. His area of specialization is interfacial science and engineering, artificial neural, uh, neutral, new, neural works in energy and energy engineering. <coughs> His group over 40 doctoral students completed and 80 masters has successfully completed several research products funded by government agencies and private companies in India and abroad. His group won the NOSIL Award of second CHE in 2012 and the BRY Air Asia Award for HVAC in 2013. He was the awarded Best Teacher Award in ICT several times and also Indian National Science Academy, INSA. Teacher and Award in 2016. In 2019, the UDCT Alumni Association attains Distinguished Alumni Award and Academic Category was bestowed upon him. He is also an active consultant to many chemical industries. He has over 85 international publications and over 100 national international conference presentation and 11 patent to his credit. The Surface Coating Society would like to honor and present a token of memento appreciation to the Dr. Sunil Bhagwat. He has gotten a new assignment. He has become now the director of ASR Pune. So, new placement. So, I'll request Professor Bhagwat to please come on the dice.
I'll request Professor Bhagwat to say a few words. Professor Pandit, our Vice Chancellor, distinguished <coughs> persons on the <coughs> dais, off the dais, colleagues from ICT, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. As Mr. Agarwal said, I am also a member of the SCS, but now I am going to take a different kind of responsibility. And that's why I have been put here today. Uh, the role I am going to be is that of a director at Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research at Pune. This is an organization like IITs are for engineering. For pure science, we had only Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. So 15 or 20 years back, the government of India thought of starting additional institutions with science, education, and research. Unlike IISC, which had started for a long time only as a research organization, ICERs have BS plus MS and PhD research. And the spectrum of activity there is not just chemistry, which I have been dealing with here, but it spans across physics, mathematics, biology, earth sciences. I have to still learn all the department names and uh, a lot of different activities. So the role is going to be here as a teacher, I would be seen at least in front of a classroom. The role there will be probably more to be seen rather than being heard. But it's a new role and I'm looking forward to it. It's a big challenge with all your good wishes. I hope to be able to take it and thank you uh, Mr. Agarwal and the society uh, uh, chairman and all the body for felicitating me here. Thank you. Thank you Bhagwat sir for the insights. Now may I please request Dr. Harish Agarwal sir to please come forward and introduce our guest of honor in detail. Our guest of honor, uh, Mr. Ashok Gupta ji, he is the driving force behind the successful brand of the Sakarni Group. The founder and chairman of the Sakarni Group entered the construction sector in 1979 with a cement trading from learned about the basics techniques involved and the importance of the networking. In 1987, he started distribution ship, but somehow went to create a trend in the market with the involving market need and understanding the desire of beautiful home. Sakarni was established in 2003 with the entrance of Plaster of Paris in the market. Sakarni gained the benefit with impactful branding and marketing. So, welcome to Gupta ji. Give him a big hand. Very small, yeah. it's very difficult to read out. Can you read it out? It's very difficult. I'll go. Uh, second of our uh, guest of honor is Mr. Hardev Singh, BS, President, Industrial Division, Nippon Paint India Private Limited, and Nepesa Group CCL Head. Mr. Hardev Singh had over four decade experience in paint and coating industry. 
He has been associated with Nippon Paint India since 2006, presently serving as a president in charge for India, Middle East and Africa region for coil, auto, protective, marine, CIG coating segments. He has been instrumental in setting up industrial business in India from scratch to achieving the market leader position in coil coating segment. In India, with a decade and expanding in new regions, thereby achieving a highest export sales of INR 1 billion in the year 2021, he was assigned additional role of leading Nipesa Group CCL business in 2023. Nipesa, I think, I think Nippon India Paint Southeast Asia. Yeah, okay. Nippon Southeast Asia, Nippon, Southeast Asia CCL Group. <coughs> Mr. Hardev Singh is a very well-known personality in coil coating and automotive paint industry for providing cutting edge technology, endeavoring to the excellence. He is regarded as a pioneer among the industry leader for his domain experts and vast business network in India, ME Europe, and the East Africa region. According to him, every region should have defined a roadmap which is desired due to the accomplish and the purpose of wealth maximizations. So welcome to our Hargev Thank you, sir. So it is an important part of our culture to express a kind gesture to them who have taken special efforts to make the event success with their presence. So for this felicitation, I now request Dr. A.J. Singh, sir, to please felicitate Dr. A.B. Pandit, sir, with the shawl, bouquet, and the memento. Dr. Pandit, Vice, uh, Vice uh, Chancellor of the University, ICT. Many of you know him. He's a gem of a person in the sense he has a lot of activities in education. That is number one. He has number of uh, PhD students. He has done <coughs> I'll just read out some of the important things in this. After uh, earning B.Tech degree from Institute of Technology, IIT, Banaras Hindu University in 1980. He came to Mumbai and uh, started his uh, <coughs> PhD in the year 1980. University of Dep uh, Department of Chemical Technology. In 1984 and from 1984 till 1990, he worked in the Department of Chemical Engineering, University of Cambridge, United Kingdom. He developed many novel designs of gas liquid contractors and also developed new impeller designs. He has been instrumental in starting a major activity in program in the area of hydrodynamic cavitation for the intensification of physical and chemical processing applications. Professor Pandit has authored over 400 publications, five books, and over 12 chapters and 16 patents to his credit. I think it's a wonderful achievement in this area. And that's why he is a VC of the university. He is on the, he is on the board of, uh, editorial board of uh, five international scientific journals. He has guided 50 PhDs and 88 master's students so far. And is a Sir J.C. Bose follower of Government of India. Professor Mandit is a recipient of many national and international awards and is a fellow of all science academies of India and also a fellow of the World Academy of Sciences. And in fact, I am more thankful to Dr. Pandit. It is because of him, he was instrumental in giving us all the facilities in ICT. Thank you very much, Mr. Pandit, Dr. Pandit. And Pandit. I request AJ Singh, sir, to please felicitate Dr. A.B. Pandit, sir. A 
applause. Thank you, sir. Again, can I please request Dr. A.J. Singh, sir, to please felicitate our guest of honor, Mr. Ashok Gupta, sir, with the bouquet, shawl, and memento. Thank you, sir. Again, may I please request Dr. A.J. Singh, sir, to please felicitate So now I request Dr. Harish Agrawal sir to please present certificate by KTEC India and Anupam Colors to the guest of honours. I again request Dr. A.J. Singh sir along with all the dignitaries to please felicitate So I request MVN Rao sir to please come forward for the distribution of the certificate. Can we please have Amar Bhimrao Kokate on the dais to distribute the certificate to the guest of honours? Do we have Madhav Upadhyay? So please come forward. Thank you, sir.
I request Mr. Gagandip Bansal to please come forward. May I please request Parth Vadia to come to come forward? Parth Vadia. Thank you, sir. Okay, so I again request, so please wait. I again request Dr. A.J. Singh, sir, to please felicitate a second guest of honor, Mr. Hardev Singh, sir. Dr. A.J. Singh, sir, along with all the dignitaries, please present our guest of honor, Dr. Hardev Singh, sir, with the memento and the bouquet. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now may I please request our today's chief guest, Dr. A.B. Pandit sir, to please address us. Good morning and welcome to ICT. Guest of honor, Sri Ashok Gupta, Sri Hardev Singh, Dr. Harish Agarwal, Ramarjit Singh, Professor Arin Jakta, Professor Shanai, my colleague Professor Bhagwat, and all the dignitaries in the audience as well as the participants for this particular course. I feel extremely proud that uh, you have felicitated Professor Bhagwat. In fact, Professor Bhagwat's BK Minj batch was the first batch which I taught in 1984. And I feel very proud that my student is being honored with the directorship of one of the premier institutes, science institutes of ICT. They always say that uh, teacher feels proud when his student achieves something and that's exactly the feeling which I get. So I'm very happy to be here and also the kind of customized course which you have planned is essentially based on science. And Professor Bhagwat's work in the area of interfacial sciences is going to be a basis for this course. The understanding of the structure property relationship of various additives which are used in the paint industry. Now we have a category such as industrial paints, then we have decorative paints, then we have marine paints. But we do not seem to cater for a regional paint. You understand in India, the kind of experience which the paint has to go through when coated in the external circumstances or for external environmental experiences, there are regions where at least 10 or 12, 11 months of the year, the paint will have to withstand rain. There are regions where the paint will have to withstand extreme humidity. There are regions where paint has to withstand extreme temperature fluctuations. 
sometimes going below grass transition temperatures and similar to we having a customized color matching facility i believe even though you can make the base paint on a bulk basis the distributor should have a facility to make small batches satisfying the needs of the local community based on the kind of requirements the paint has now all these are essentially achieved by using various additives so there is no harm in distributing these additives similar to you distributing colors to match whatever color we want to have why can't the distributors also have a similar capability of having additives which will render that special property to the paint which serves the local region now this is a challenge to the surface coating society so the paint formulations which are used in the western world are different than the paint formulations which are do used in the tropical countries similarly the regional variation should also be accounted for and if it is not so and you feel that one paint will serve the entire industries then achieving that is going to make that paint unnecessarily expensive for others who do not require that and for others who do require it of course they will meet those standards now this is my suggestion to the society as well as those who are involved in the paint formulations and i like the title of this that these are called raw material partners right rather than saying partners raw material partners the raw materials can be of different types these are the physical raw materials which they are referring to but to for us for this course to be successful you also require a significant raw material in terms of its content in terms of its technologies in terms of its science and in terms of expertise so all these expertise science technology come together which forms the raw material a successful course is conducted and i am sure today we have taken all these issues into account and the course which is customized as we call it will try to address the issues which i just talked about and all those participants who have come to attend this course will go out richer in terms of experience in terms of understanding of the science in terms of understanding the structure property relationship in terms of understanding the role of various additives their proportions their compatibility with the other raw materials and if they achieve this i think the basic course objective has been served so i compliment to the society for conducting such course and i wish this course all the very best thank you thank you for the valuable word sir i now request our guest of honor mr ashok gupta sir to please address the ceremony namaskar respected chief guests ab pandit ji and manch pe upasthit atigan sathiyo सबसे पहले मैं हरीश जी और इनकी टीम को मैं मुबारकबाद देता हूं कि जिन्होंने अल्टीमेटली सरफेस कोटिंग सोसाइटी की जो शुरुआत की है बेसिकली दोस्तों मेरा मानना ऐसा है कि आज के समय के अंदर अगर मैं बातचीत करूं हर चीज़ का अपना एक समय है फसल को बोने का समय है फसल को काटने का अपना समय है लेकिन आज का जो समय है वो टेक्नोलॉजी का समय है बेसिकली हर लेवल पर हमें चाहिए कि नयापन हम क्या दे सकते हैं बाज़ार को मुझे याद आता है एक एग्जाम्पल दिल्ली के पास एनसीआर के अंदर सुपर टैक करके एक बिल्डर ने एक टावर को बनाया दो मंजिल टावर को गवर्नमेंट ने कहा कि साहब इसको गिराया जाएगा ये नहीं चलेगा आईआईटी आई रुड़की टेक्नोलॉजिस्ट जो है उसके अंदर उनका इन्वॉल्वमेंट रहा आप विश्वास करेंगे मतलब पूरा आरसीसी बिल्डिंग 24 मंजिल टावर कुछ ही मिनटों के अंदर जो है डर डर करके इनको खराक से गिरा दिया गया और साथ में दोनों तरफ आस जो है पूरा का पूरा रेजिडेंस एरिया है और उसको सेफ काउंट कर तरीके से जो है ये गिरा दिया गया इसमें से क्या है कि जो समय है वो टेक्नोलॉजी टेक्नोलॉजी का जमा है जमाना है बेसिक आज की रेट के अंदर कि हम जो है नयापन बाज़ार को क्या दे रहे हैं उसका रीज़न क्या है कि कस्टमर का रिक्वायरमेंट्स हो गया है 
हम लोग पिछले पिछहत्तर साल से भी ज़्यादा बिल्डिंग मटेरियल कंस्ट्रक्शन के बिजनेस के अंदर हैं उस जमाने में मुझे याद है अट्ठारह इंची दीवार को जो है वो माना जाता है कि सब मजबूत बिल्डिंग बनेगा अठारह इंची अगर इतनी बड़ी दीवार होगा और वही आज की डेट के अंदर वो चार इंची दीवार भी उससे कहीं ज़्यादा जो है वो बेनिफिट देती है ये सारी चीज़ें क्या हैं ये सारी चीज़ें जो है वो टेक्नोलॉजीज की वजह से हम लोग इसको कर पाते हैं मैं हरीश जी और उनकी तमाम टीम को मैं मुबारकबाद देता हूँ कि जो है मैं अपने आप को सौभाग्यशाली भी मानता हूँ हालांकि मेरी एक्सपर्टाइज थोड़ा मार्केटिंग का है क्योंकि मैं ज़्यादा टेक्निकल चीज़ों को मुझे नहीं आता है और मुझे ये मौका आप लोगों के साथ काम करने का मौका मिला है इसके लिए मैं आभारी हूँ बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सर फॉर द इंसाइटफुल एक्सपीरियंस नाउ मे आई प्लीज इनवाइट आर सेकेंड गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर मिस्टर हरदेव सिंह सर ऑन द डायस टू एड्रेस good morning uh, dignitaries and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity and being uh, guest of honor also for this uh, program i see uh, many of my seniors over here and i feel really honored and uh, humbled that i am standing here uh, many many years back uh, this was one of the institute where i wanted to be uh, uh, as a student uh, somehow financial conditions and other uh, conditions did not allow me although i qualified for the percentage marks and i had to take my job and that job was with uh, of course asian pens and then uh, i served there of course having come from the humble background uh, i studied in marathi language marathi higher i never went to english uh, uh, convent school or uh, that was not uh, possible during that time but today uh, find uh, i feel uh, quite contented that you know whatever we could achieve or i could achieve personally with the sub able support of all the industry stalwarts i'm here thank you uh, for all the support uh, without my colleague support for last 40 45 years i could not have been uh, possible to reach uh, this particular level so i thought of talking about uh, you know what nippon paint is today i mean last uh, about 16 17 years i am with them so i'll give some background about what nippon paint is and uh, there are many students also i find over here and in case uh, uh, because i was also in that situation many decades ago and in case uh, they need the, our support guidance helping hands uh, i am always there thank you so uh, we are talking about uh, nippon and uh, nipsi nipsi is nippon southeast asia and uh, we are uh, you can see over here uh, we are 9.2 billion dollar company it's a huge turnover we are fourth largest in the world and uh, uh, having presence in uh, more than 70 odd countries and we are asia pacific number 1 uh, as far as our uh, business foundations are concerned we talk about innovation we talk about leadership value driven focused and service oriented all these are requirements for anyone to get success uh, for paint and coating uh, we have a uh, diverse uh, requirements as earlier uh, doctor mentioned and uh, for all the requirements whether it is trade industrial uh, 
marine powder coating, coil coating, we are having all those segments and we cater to them. Uh, as far as total uh, paint and coating segments are concerned, presence in more than any manufacture, 80 manufacturing uh, locations, 18 operations at various locations, more than 23,000 employees and uh, started off uh, Southeast Asia way back in 60s and then we have presence in all these countries. I will not name it. You can uh, see it, please. Then <coughs> recent acquisitions, uh, we, while uh, doing uh, organic growth, we have also acquired uh, Jube. Uh, chromology, Indocote in India, then uh, Dulux Group in Australia and New Zealand, and Betek Boya, uh, they are from uh, uh, Turkey. Now we have, uh, the strength of our company is innovation, and uh, as the environment changes, as the requirement changes, as the industry demands are uh, various uh, challenging uh, uh, specifications to be met, you know, that's why we have various R&D centers across the world over. And uh, about Nippon Paint business, uh, we started off with our registration in 2006, uh, headquartered in Chennai, but we have operations in Mumbai. I basically sit in Mumbai, our Toluja plant, and uh, Babel is uh, auto refinish uh, location. We have uh, about 1,300 plus direct employees. Our turnover is beyond 2,300 crores. And uh, as far as business lines are concerned, we are into trade, decorative, auto refinish, coil coating, auto OEMs, protective coating, marine, and other industrial coatings. Now for uh, Toluja, Toluja plant per se, we are having uh, IU operations. IU is industrial use. And uh, we cater uh, coil coating, uh, auto OEM coating, protective marine, and other industrial business. We are the first uh, paint company to get a green co rating because environment protection is most important as of now. And uh, in future, I mean recently, last to last week, I was there in uh, Europe and they are talking of now bio-based product, you know. So environment is a most important concern for uh, all the paint industries and we mainly using solvents have our uh, basic responsibility that how we can reduce the consumption and have a carbon footprint on a positive side. So Green Pro uh, products are also certified as uh, Green Pro by CIA. So these are the initiatives which we had taken. This is our plant at uh, Taluja. And uh, many of my colleagues are also here from there. They are many of the directors and GMs are also present. And uh, we have about 80 odd uh, scientists who are based here and our headcount is about 400 here. These are all our standard uh, R&D lab instruments. We also have a testing lab of a natural environment because while we have sunshine weatherometer, color, uh, QUV, salt spray, all these things, but when you try to correlate many a time, you will find these correlations do not exactly go hand in hand with what natural uh, exposures require. And once we have to have a correlation between the accelerated uh, test vis-a-vis -vis the natural test and study of these correlations definitely gives how the system will perform over a period of time in a different environment. So uh, recently we have formed a group uh, within uh, NIPSI and uh, we correlate the exposures of, say, China, Florida. Uh, then we also have exposure in uh, Singapore and uh, Japan. So all these, I mean, uh, if I have to test one particular product, I will not do it only at Taluja, but all these other centers also. And every three months, we collect that particular data and have our database ready. I mean, today, uh, we also have a spectrum bank in uh, Mumbai where more than 2,000 combinations of product shade and exterior durable tested products with the pigments and the resins uh, along with the cross-linkers, which will give a longer durability kind of uh, exposure. So those formulas 
for the industries are readily available. So that is how uh, we cater to the industry. The value we bring, uh, you know, uh, started business way back in 1881. So we are more than 140 odd year old company. We are uh, number one market share in uh, Japan and Asia Pacific region. The recent uh, accolade is we are rated uh, the great place to work uh, in 2023. A strong brand value to be associated with and a strong R&D team in India, Japan, uh, Shanghai provides opportunity uh, to explore the new culture and uh, technologies world over. And we are sitting here and talking about technology in ICT and that's a proud moment. And I'm sure the student from here will definitely find this is relevant. Thank you. Thank you so much sir, for the insights. So now with this the inaugural part is over. For the final word of thanks, may I please invite Mr. Manoj Mudaliar on the stage. Thank you. Well, it was a, a great insight from all of the veterans of the industry. And I thank everybody present over here. Uh, and thank you. <clears throat> With this inaugural ceremony summed up, I would like to thank all the dignitaries on the dice, of the dice for gracing this event with their presence. Now, as we proceed forward with the technical sessions. Before starting the technical sessions, I would like to inform all the audience that today is a small twist. If the audience pays full attention to the presentation, there will be some surprise questions after each presentation or each technical session, which shall be awarded with a suitable gift. So quickly moving forward, I would like to request Dr. Hemang Patil from 20 Microns to come on the dice and start with his presentation. His topic is industrial function extenders for paints and coatings. Okay. Okay. We'll have a just a quick five minutes break for everyone to freshen up and then we'll start with the technical sessions. Introduce the course. Before skip starting the technical session, you just call him for the five minutes. No, no, we'll, we'll do one thing. We'll start the session. What do you think, sir? He announced that Let him start. No, 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 no. 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 Sorry, sorry, I'm Hello. Yeah, I'm Sure. <laughs> Thank you. I'll give you my card. I'm not carrying it. Ah, plus student, yeah. Sure. This is not. Um, this card, I have. 
मैं भी अरेंज करता हूँ जस्ट सो सिक्स टेन सेवन प्लस हाँ प्लस स्टूडेंट है मेरे ना ओ बैक ऑफ 2015 मैंने ना ये भी मैंने ना तो मास्टर्स करूँ अलग आता बिजनेस बुक पे
तो आ रहा हूँ ठीक हेलो हेलो Actually, you can if you want, you can just use this one also.
He is a member of Indian Carbon Society, Material Research Society of India. He has also published many papers in national and international journals in his PhD career. Dr. Heyman. So should I start? Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Hello, everyone. Very good day to all of you. <coughs> I would like to thank you, organizing committee and sponsor, for providing me an opportunity for this presentation. I am looking forward to talking with you, industrial functional extender for paints and coating applications. So, you, uh, I have just brief about this small video. Maybe some of you have uh, shown your uh, during the career. This video has been prepared by Daniel Obescrow, who is the physicist from NASA. And he has clearly mentioned about difference between the nano and micromolecules. So here he has described how nanomaterials and the gigantic galaxy. So if we see here, then we can also say that Earth is also a nano particles. So in 1949, Professor Richard Fianman has a deliver a lecture and in his lecture he told that before 62 years back, he told that in future scientists can able to develop and manipulate individual atoms and molecules. So now, uh, Professor, uh, then letters decay, Professor Norio Tanaguchi, Japanese scientist has given the term of nanotechnology. So according to nanotechnology, it is the microscopic particle which has one dimension less than 100 nanometer. So question rise in mind that what about the particles which does not have one dimension less than 100 nanometer. So they they are term as micron, submicrons and ultrafine materials. So we have started our company 20 microns before 35 years back and by the time we are continuously modifying and developing the material which will be helpful for the different different industries. Now you have seen the galaxy. Now you can see over here that how the small the materials. So they provided DNA, RNA, white, white and uh, white uh, cells, as well as one is uh, proton, neutron, femtometer, picometer. So this is the basic difference. And how one can utilize or take the advantage of the material from daily routine they are using it for paint formulations. Also nu nucleus, protons and neutrons, basically we talk about the atoms quantum dots. So this is basic difference that Daniel has provided. Now I will start with the presentation. So I will provide you basic industrial minerals, function of extenders in paints and coatings, basic of production methods for the development of the minerals and importance of individual functional minerals in paint and coating. 
so these are the basic industrial minerals which will be utilized by paint industries since uh, many times or many years so these all are the natural minerals and they are categorized based on the primary minerals and secondary minerals so primary minerals are those who are formed with cooling of the magma and secondary minerals are those who are not formed with the cooling of the magma they are formed with the some other process so three scientists lau nipping and fedrick they have studied the morphology and crystal structure of the study by copper sulfate and zinc sulfide blend and they have put it into the x ray under x ray and they have find the different atoms molecules of the single particles and from that i can say that or we can say that calcium carbonate have different morphology different structure will provide you different property in paint applications so uh, this is basic composition of paint it contains binders solvent or water pigment or fillers and additives all of has this individual importance for the preparation of the paint and here we will talk about the fillers so uh, fillers or extenders they are categorized in three way normal fillers in which they have d50 around 20 microns functional fillers which have d50 around 10 to 2 microns and multifunctional fillers they have average particle size d50 around 1 microns so as you know that this is the mo hardness scale of the minerals in which talc is the softest material if you utilize in your paint application it will provides very good leveling properties and diamond is the hardness material but it is not utilized in paint but of course quartz it has a more hardness seven and it will utilize for the paint applications but for the pro processing or micronization of quartz it is uh, very difficult because uh, frequently it will damage the processing of the instruments so one has to take care about it and also when you utilize silica or quartz in your paint formulation it provides very good wet scrub resistance in your paint formulations so these are basic refractive indices data that i have provided you can see over here that tio to provides the maximum refractive index and lower is the vacuum it has a one and how refractive index will affect your paint properties that i will provide you in my upcoming slide so for the preparation of paint as per as extender or particles concern they have particle size particle shapes and particle size distribution it is the most important that one can know about it so you can show over here that i have mentioned blocky type needle or fiber type spherical type or plate like structure so as per as fiber type structure is concerned the aspect ratio you can see over here that it has mean length to diameter and the aspect ratio for the plate like structure is the mean diameter to thickness and how it will be help for the paint that i will provide you in my next slide so uh, you can see over here that left side image and right side image of the paint film it is just animation so if a platy particles like kaolin talc mica if you utilize in your paint formulations and they are form or parallel to the, the paint film if you consider that black portion is the paint film then it will not allow to pass moisture inside the paint film and by this way you will get the weather resistance in your paint formulations and right side image is the needle type or thread type structure so atapulgite and wallastonite they have a needle type and thread type structure so when you utilize this material in your paint formulation it will provide very good reinforcement with the paint film because they align perpendicular to the paint film and by this way you can utilize in intercoat paint adhesion 
so what filler will do or filler will provide the properties in the paint so you can see over here that filler provides very good mechanical strength it also provide filling effect and by this way one can reduce the volatile organic content it gives very smooth coating as well as gloss it also provides very good weather effect and also ir reflecting effect and most important thing it also provides very good rheological properties so these are all characteristic that i have explained so i will just keep uh one thing you should know that what is the oil absorption of my minerals or my ex extenders it will provide very good flowability suspension leveling and thickening effect for the paint formulations so this is the basic type of the paint you can see over here solvent based water based and powder coating there are many sub branches in solvent based and water based paint but this is for idea i have put over here and these are the percentage loading of the fillers one can utilize for the exterior paint i have provided approximate data that in texture coating in cheap acrylic emulsion 100% acrylic emulsion and elastomeric coating you can use the concentration of filler depend on the percentage wise and also i have provided the percentage loading for interior paint so you can see over here that wall putty contains 93 to 95% of only filler percent so now i will describe the basic process for the production of the functional extenders so we have types of micronization how many types calcineer process and spray dry process so you can see over here that in my previous slide i have told that three types of filler normal filler multifunctional filler and functional filler so all fillers depends on this micronization process if we i if i am considering the top down method because these are all lumps comes from the mines so we needs to grinding so for grinding you can see over here that ball mill pin mill and hammer mill so how it will works and how it will provide you average particle size as well as particle size distribution all depends on this type of technique so uh, this is a very good video i have taken from some of the company video and it shows the basic calciner process so if i will talk about the calcin kaolin how calcin kaolin will be produced then we have our own mindset booth location we brings the lump from the mines and then we cut into the piece and put into the hopper and after that it will further grind to the final powder and after that they convey to roller into calciner that calciner it has a temperature around 1000 to 1200 degree celsius having rotating calciner or clean you can say that and after passing through clean there is a specific dwell time we are providing to the material so individual surface will get calcine and you will get the calcine materials after classification and then packing now calcine kaolin provides very good dry hiding in paint formulations so you can see over here this is the calciner and after calciner it will pass through roller mill through classification and after classification one can directly pack into different different packing size so from the blower one can classify with different different sizes so all things depend on how you are micronizing the material
now another is spray dry technique so if you utilize spray dry material on in your paint formulation it provides very good loading effect without affecting the viscosity data so say for example if i need to make spray dry of the hydrous kaolin so you can see over here that i have provided that agitator in which certain percentage of slurry we are putting in that reactor and that it will pass to this hot air junction it contains the sprinkler and where in that case water will be evaporated and you will get the spray dried material and after that it will pass it into certain mass size and then it will be further classify and after the classification it will pack so spray dry material will also provide very good properties in paint formulation so these are the basic process which will be helpful for the design of the paint this is the classification system now i will uh, brief about uh, our minerals that calcium carbonate and dolomite so uh, calcium carbonate contains four per, uh, has been found in the four uh, in the earth crust and its amount is 4% and you can find all over the world while dolomite it found in the sedimentary rocks so calcium carbonate has more hardness around 3 while dolomite has 3.5 to 4 so when you utilize this calcium carbonate uh, or you can say that what is the difference between calcium carbonate and dolomite if i utilize in the paint so uh, due to little bit higher more hardness of the dolomite it provides very good wet scrub resistance compared to the calcium carbonate so uh, these are the basic lumps how lumps look like so you can see over here that calcium carbonate and dolomite look, look like whiter little bit gray color so for production of the whiter material one has to uh, need to select whiter material and segregate and after segregation one can do the micronization of the process and another most important parameter is the morphology that i have told in my previous slide different region has a different morphology you can see over here that calcium carbonate having a different morphology and it depends on how they are form if you utilize porous material or porous type loose particle in your paint formulation and if you utilize this uh, you can see right side top right side in your paint formulation it definitely provide different results porous material will provide you slight yellowing effect with less opacity while this right side image there is no defect it is a very smooth like cadbury chocolate structure so it provides very good opacity and whiteness in your paint formulations it has a cubic uh, particle size and structure and as well as dolomite has also a cubic type morphology so these are some approximate data i have provided that in exterior paint or solvent based paint how much the dosage in solvent based paint calcium carbonate we can utilize for powder coating application for ink applications and for interior paint so approx 50 to 60% this calcium carbonate has been utilized by the paint industries so i have provided one basic guideline formulation in this also we have utilized china clay hydrous kaolin and calcium carbonate but here the dosage of the calcium carbonate is higher so it provides very good opacity by spacing the titanium dioxide as well as it has a very good dispersibility now one most important thing for uh, hydrous kaolin so you can see over here that left side image you can see the clear water and also you can see the starfish at the bottom 
but in the right side you are not able to see the bottom of the bucket so if we we'll, i take as a example so same mechanism we can apply over hydrous kaolin and calcine kaolin so hydrous kaolin it has a very smooth structure but when we calcine it around 1000 or 1200 degrees celsius it will loses its crystal water and due to it loses crystal water it will forms micro or nano pores so when you utilize that material in your paint formulation it will provides very good dry hiding compared to hydrous kaolin so this is basic mechanism of the refractive index why i am not able to see the bottom part of the bucket it is due to the changing in the refractive index of the air bubbles and the water so hydrous kaolin it works by the spacing of the tio2 it provides very good uh, semi gloss or glossy effect when you utilize in your paint formulations but it has one disadvantage of the low brightness compared to the calcine kaolin when you calcine the material it it has increased its whiteness and the brightness parameter but when you utilize calcine kaolin in your paint formulation it provides semi matte type or satin time effect in paint applications so both have advantage and disadvantage so these are the lumps of the hydrous kaolin and you can see over here that how its micrograph look like it is a platy structure and between the plate there is a minimum gap between the particles so hydrous kaolin in exterior paint and solvent based paint and in interior paint you can see over its dosage in powder coating uh, maybe no one is using in powder coating applications so we have prepared one solvent based paint using hydrous kaolin and you can uh, you can see over here that it provides very good viscosity data similarly these are the data of the calcine kaolin when you utilize in your paint formulation and we have prepared one paint using calcine kaolin it will provide very good tinting strength as well as dry hiding opacity and this is for your example now we have natural barium sulfate and it has a formula baso4 it is a white color and also available in the gray color also and its mo hardness is around 3 to 3.5 when you utilize this barium sulfate in your solvent based formulation uh, it will provide very good gloss and maximum dosage or maximum amount has been utilized for the powder coating application for the tio2 replacement so how its uh, lumps look like you can see over here and we can provide you gray and white color natural barium sulfate and it has ellipsoidite particles you can see over here and we have provided some uh, formulation percentage dosage how it can be utilized and using baso4 means barium sulfate we have prepared a solvent based decorative paint and it provides very good gloss and also reduce the volatile organic content Uh, another we have a talc series it is uh, basically hydrated magnesium silicate and its mo hardness is around 1 it is a little bit hydrophobic nature so in water based formu paint formulation it is very difficult to disperse it but in solvent based paint it will easily disperse and provide you very good thickening as well as leveling effect so these are its lumps and how we prepared the powder from it and this is scanning of uh, scanning electron micrograph of the talc you can see how platy type structure and flaky structure when you utilize uh, you recall my previous slide that if platy particles align parallelly then it will provides very good weather effect and that's why talc is utilized for the weather as well as anti corrosion properties Uh, and polyester putty in polyester putty maximum dosage of the talc has been utilized in paint formulations uh, another we have mica 
So it is hydrated phyllosilicate and its Mohr hardness is around 2 to 2.5 and it has a very high aspect ratio means very large platy structure and very smooth structure. You will not find any defect in his micrograph. So these are the structure lumps of and below mentioned the its micrograph very smooth micrograph and you can see that mica it can be utilized in exterior and solvent based paint in interior paint no one is using and uh, we have provided one guideline formulation you can see over here it provides very good barrier effect also another is silica silica there are synonyms of ground silica nuacolloid tripoli flint precipitated silica gel and fume silica there, these are the uh, synthetic silica and as far as natural concern they are tri tripoli flint and ground silica so silica provides very good wet scrub resistance in your paint formulation also it provides very good viscosity and rheological property if its phases is changed if you utilize fume silica in your paint formulations so these are the approximate data we have feldspar so feldspar it is abundantly available in India and we have sodium and photas feldspar and its more hardness is around 6. Some of the company they are replacing silica with feldspar. Feldspar is also a very good minerals you can see over here and you can see over it scanning electron micrograph. It is a very hard minerals. Uh, last one is the natural red oxide. So natural red oxide it is uh, come from the hematite minerals and it has a more hardness around 5 to 6 and it provides very good anti-corrosive properties. So after the primer, if you prepare a primer using red oxide, it create a passive layer on the surface. It will not allow to pass moisture inside the coating and that's why it provides very good anti-corrosion properties. So I will just keep uh, red oxide in paint and this is epoxy red oxide in paint i have provided just guideline formulation and it provides very good resistance to weathering so uh, industrial minerals are specially famous for their physical and chemical properties and it can be utilized for many industrial application like paint plastic rubber ceramic cosmetics and as a 20 microns we provide all type of the natural minerals and <coughs> we also provide very cost effective natural minerals to different industries. So this is from my side whatever minerals we are providing they are eco friendly cost effective provides very good coverage and smooth finish and rheology in paint formulations. So thank you from my side. If you have any question, you can ask me. Consumption? Yes, 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 we can provide you, sir. For which type of? Uh, for individual paint formulation or? Hydroskeolin is more, sir. Hydroskaolin calcium carbonate is more. Yes. Calcium carbonate and hydroskaolin. No, 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 maximum amount is this. Uh, any idea magnesium lithium silicate called hectorite available in India? Uh, right now, sir, hectorite is not available not in India, but uh, we can uh, develop in R&D. Try to do that. Thank you, sir. Request uh, Bhavi, sir, he will come. You just it is a precipitated it. barium sulfate. Okay, he is from 20 micro. Sir, it is Bhavi, available okay. with us. D50 around 0.8 means 0.8 to 1 microns less than, but it is precipitated. Here I have provided you natural barium sulfate. Yes, yes, it is amorphous, precipitated. Yes. Excuse, excuse me, just to interrupt. Can you uh, identify yourself for all others? 
those who are asking questions. Please. Okay, sir. Sir, okay, lower means how much uh, value? Yes, we have available with us. No, we have uh, TALC HFM 15. It has uh, oil absorption around 15 to 20. So you will get it, sir. TALC is oleophilic, so it will have this yeah. tendency. Yes, and also provide uh, corrosion resistance. Any, any more questions? There is a small query, doctor. Yes. Sir. Do you give any surface treatment to your uh, fillers? Yes, sir. We, we can provide, but uh, they yeah, are sir, special yeah. uh, In this presentation, I have not uh, provided. But you provide that? Yes, yes. We, 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 thank you. Uh, and we need help of uh, Sri sir. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Patel. Thank you, sir. May I invite the next speaker? Thank you, sir. So now, as already announced, we have one surprise question for the audience. So for that, I would like to call upon our PhD, Shubham Poddar, sir. I know we do not have that excellency to ask the question to the respected audience, but this is only for keeping the atmosphere playful. So the first question is, which is the most hard hardest filler material which can be used in paints? Anyone? Quartz. Tipanna, sir. <laughs> I request Dr. Uh, Hemang Patel sir to please present the gift to the person who have given the right answer. So this second question is, name any softest uh, mineral filler. Uh, pink, pink, pink shirt. <laughs> Basic question, students be an ICL students. Actually, you should keep for students. Yeah, but. That's that's problem. Actually, I was telling you know that should be students first year, second year, third year, fourth year. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So next, uh, I'd like to call Prakash Bhave sir from Twenty Microns Ltd. Right? Yeah. So can I please have Prakash Bhave sir on the dais? I request uh, Dr. Shinoy sir to please present Bhave sir with the certificate. Thank you, sir. Uh, so for the next uh, technical session, I would like to call upon Dr. S.C. Srivats sir from KTech India Limited. So I request Dr. Shinoy, sir. Okay, so before that, uh, we will like to present Momento and Bouquet to Dr. Hemang Patel, sir, our first speaker. So please come forward.
मोमेंटो प्लीज Thank you, sir. Okay, so next, uh, I'd like to call upon Dr. S. C. Shivatsav, sir. Before that, let me introduce. I myself, uh, Professor Shinoy, from this institute only. I am still adjunct professor here and teaching uh, in continuity. The next speaker is uh, Subhash Srivastava. He is a normal, you know, what we call graduate and postgraduate, etc., etc. But his experience in industry especially in uh, his subject and he was sharing with our student also many times as a visiting person or visiting faculty. So besides his industrial career, he has also a teaching, I mean habits or teaching skills for our students. So friends, a friend of mine for more than about 45, 50 years. He has uh, had a big experience in his subject. Of course, he will share with us. And then earlier he was uh, with Color Chem, as far as I know, which is not mentioned here. Subhash. But then uh, he started KTEC and then KTEC Corporation now, which he is leading and giving very fantastic uh, materials for coating compositions. So um, may I now present Subhash Srivastava for his... Namaskar. Good afternoon. Indeed, it is a great pride, privilege and honor for me to be here amid this galaxy of pain technologists at ICT. ICT is a very nostalgic place. I come from uh, in discipline of HBTI Kanpur, the oldest institution of pain technologies in in country. But when I come to ICT, I feel like a homecoming. I normally used to, jokingly used to say to earlier when I used to come here, it's like, you know, coming to your Mausi Ge Ghar, because Ma Sharda ki HBTI or ICT do betiya hai. Aur us lihaas se, सारे आईसीटी के लोग हमारे मौसी के लड़के हुए मौसेरे भाई <laughs> इसीलिए कहा जाता है चोर चोर मौसेरे भाई कोई ताऊ और चाचा के लड़का बिकॉज वहाँ पे प्रॉपर्टी का डिवीजन होता है और हमारे बीच में कोई डिवीजन नहीं है हुँ? तो इस लिहाज से यू नो आई कॉल देम यू नो इज वन ऑफ देम एंड दे हैव फेलिसिटेटेड मी फेलो ऑफ कलर सोसाइटी एंड ऑल्सो विद दिस सर्फेस कोटिंग हमारे हरीश जी ने शुरू किया मैं साथ जुड़ा हूं क्योंकि वो नॉलेज शेयरिंग है बिकॉज एक्चुअली एज ए फिलासफी ऑफ इंडिया वी कैन नॉट से द नॉलेज द ट्रुथ वी हैव फाउंड सत्य कभी भी खोजा नहीं जा सकता वी हैव ए प्रिंसिपल ऑफ चरा वैती कीप वॉकिंग चलते रहो चलते रहो चलते रहो वी हैव ए प्रिंसिपल ऑफ नेति 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 ये भी नहीं है ये भी नहीं है ये भी नहीं है तो नेति 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 एंड चरावैती इज एक्चुअली आवर 
फाउंडिंग प्रिंसिपल्स एकम सत्य बहुदा वदंती विप्रा सत्य तो एक है लेकिन लोग अलग अलग तरीके से बोलते हैं आई एम श्योर आई डू नॉट नो एनी थिंग एंड आई एम श्योर दैट इन थर्टी मिनट्स आई कैन नॉट टीच यू एडिटिव सो प्लीज बिलीव मी दैट आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू डू द सेल स्टॉक तीस मिनट में इस तीस मिनट के अंदर हम आपको क्या बताएंगे क्या नहीं तो वी आर ट्राइंग टू ओनली प्रेजेंट सम पिक्चर्स सम प्रेजेंटेशन एज ए स्ट्रक्चर्ड प्रोग्राम ऑफ वॉट इज वैल्यू एडिशन यू हैव सीन यू नो मेनी पीपल वी टॉकिंग अबाउट टाल्क चाइना क्ले वाइटिंग वेराइटीज वेल्स पार हेक्टोराइट बेंटोनाइट मॉन्टमिलइट सो मेनी थिंग्स दीज आर मिनरल्स डू यू थिंक दे आर वॉट इज द प्राइस कॉस्ट टाल्क कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट डोरोमाइट आई थिंक जस्ट वन टू थ्री फाइव टू रुपीज टेन रुपीज ट्वेंटी रुपीज मैक्सिमम दीज आर द वैल्यू दिस इज द वैल्यू दिस इज नथिंग दिस इज अ मिनरल दिस इज रिसोर्सेज वेन द पीपल लाइक यू एक्ट ऑन इट वेन द पीपल लाइक यू हु आर डिसिप्लिन विथ सर्टन नॉलेज एक्ट अपॉन इट डू वैल्यू एडिशन इनोवेशन इट मीन्स हमारे यहाँ पे प्रकृति और पुरुष का सिद्धांत है प्रकृति मीन्स नेचर दिस इज ऑल नेचुरल मटीरियल पुरुष मीन्स द एक्टिव मटीरियल पुरुष एंड प्रकृति परिवर्तन संसार का नियम है पुरुष का नहीं पुरुष का नियम अनुवर्तन है इनोवेशन ए पुरुष दैट इज ए एक्शन चेंजेस इनोवेशन डज इनोवेशन एंड द प्रकृति चेंजेस तो जो कहे मैंने परिवर्तन कर दिया वो गधा है परिवर्तन संसार का नियम है और मटीरियल साइंसेस चेंज होती रहती है हमें उसमें से अनुवर्तन करना होता है इनोवेशन सो माई टूडेज टॉपिक इज आर्टिस्टिक इनोवेशन इन योर पेंट टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर्चुनेटली हरीश भाई आज कला दिवस है विश्व कला दिवस आर्ट डे वर्ल्ड आर्ट डे हेरिटेज को इंसिडेंटली वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अवर आर्टिस्टिक एक्सप्लेनेशन यू विल नो एवरीबडी नो साइंस इंजीनियरिंग टेक्नोलॉजी केमिस्ट्री अल्टीमेटली वेन यू डू द पेटेंट राइटिंग इट इज कॉल्ड आर्ट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट आर्ट एंड आर्टिफेक्ट एंड एम्बॉडीमेंट्स ऑफ द आर्ट सो वी आर टाइम टू डू सर्टन काइंड ऑफ इनोवेशन इन दिस and then as a process we understand the subject and we try to add value to it because calcium carbonate china clay very low cost material in fact material science water low cost material in fact resins emulsions low cost materials but suddenly because paint is a coating material which is for value addition which is for imparting decoration aesthetics and sanitation so it becomes suddenly a talk of the town when we try to innovate and when we innovate we actually find our truth calcium carbonate china clay to what extent can add the value i give you an example and then i start you may know the mogol period and akbar and man singh and you know rana pratap everybody knows this history maybe somebody is trying to remove it but everybody knows who was ramana pratap who is man singh who is akbar and who is mogol 16th century and all of you know there is a company in in world in a ceramic calcium carbonate china clay type material and they are the world largest cut glass company called swarovski everybody knows it everybody knows it in the belgium in brussels when i was in germany i happened to be there in their uh, 13 uh, art stores underground air conditioned and one of the place i was shocked to see and i was amused and really felt uh, elated when i saw the company's writing our first appreciator of value our customer and you know who was he he was maharana pratap and chetak हमारे महाराणा प्रताप और हमारे चेतक का वहाँ पे चित्र लगा हुआ है स्वरोस्की के तेरह अंडरग्राउंड आर्टिफैक्ट्स आर्ट स्टोर्स में सुंदर सुंदर तरीके हैं उनके दे हैव डिस्प्लेड मार्वलसली फेंटास्टिक कट ग्लास क्वाड सिस्टम्स दो रुपए की चीज एंड डू यू नो व्हाई आई एम सेइंग दिस इट इज दे एक्नोलेज वो बेशर्मों की तरह बात नहीं हो रही है बहुत अम्बली दे एक्सेप्ट कि ये हमारे कस्टमर हैं हम जब जाते थे 
भर भर के थैलियाँ कट ग्लास की लेके जाते थे और वो हमारी आर्ट को देख करके दे यूज टू रिवार्ड अस एज अ रिटर्न गिफ्ट विद द इक्वल अमाउंट ऑफ रियल डायमंड्स हीरे जवाहरत हमको देते थे एंड दैट्स हाउ वी हैव बिकम सरोस्की उनको ये कहने में कोई भी शर्म नहीं है कि उन्होंने हमारे क्योंकि मुगल्स फॉर दी पैटर्न्स ऑफ यू नो आर्ट एंड कल्चर एंड म्यूजिक एंड वॉट नॉट एंड राजा मान सिंह ने इंट्रोड्यूस किया कि महाराणा प्रताप को चेतक से बहुत प्यार है आप अपने ये जो कट ग्लास के छोटे छोटे जो ऑर्नामेंट्स हैं ये उनको प्रस्तुत करो और वो आपको बहुत पैसा देंगे तो इट मीन्स कैन यू बिलीव ए क्वार्ट्स विच इज जस्ट नॉट वी टॉक्ड अबाउट एक रुपए की चीज दस रुपए की चीज करोड़ों रुपए में बिकी आज नहीं चार सौ साल से वैल्यू एडिशन यानी आप अपने काम को यदि आप वैल्यू एड करना चाहते हैं तो अनंत यात्रा है उस यात्रा पर चलना है तो उस पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से वील टॉक अबाउट हाउ वी फोकस ऑन दिस वैल्यू एडिशन बिकॉज ए मैन ओनली कैन इनोवेट मैन डजेंट चेंज तो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट फ्यू वेरी फ्यू लाइन्स रोल ऑफ कोटिंग एडिटिव्स the coating additives are special ingredients in the coatings used in a very small proportion and seldom more than 3% in paints and coating formulation very simple small jaise dal mein namak masale hmm? the role is the role now is to enhance improve modify optimize the properties and the performance during stages there's a do that manufacturing stage application stage and the storage stage and the coating life stage these are the four stages in which we have as a paint technologies owners of responsibility of upgrading innovating the technology <coughs> sorry so now the role is again in a trilogy a trilogy of pigments and a solvents and a resin in this way we talk about trilogy of you know our paint brahma vishnu mahesh pigment solvents and resins here the solvent will be water in the current case we have three interactions that is resin pigment interaction pigment solvent interaction and resin solvent interaction and then we have three typical surface physical physiochemical processes called solvation association and adsorption you know we have to see how a less than 1% material solvates adsorbs associates and helps the interaction of resin solvent pigment resin and solvent and uh, the resin and the pigment these interactions are to be controlled these are very many may millions of interactions millions millions and then it's not possible in 30 minutes to touch all upon but we will try to see quickly now these four uh, these uh, additives we can very quickly for the uh, forget about the brand names we are only talking about at the moment academics the surface active like emulsifiers surfactants dispersants deformer adhesion promoter and anti flooding chemicals which are the functions these various chemistries are outlined those are the surface active additives which are used for innovation these slides i will request dr harish to pass on to as a teaching material then there is something is called special activity special activity means like anti skinning like uv like corrosion like photo initiations like flame retardants and like biocide these are very special active additives which have different uh, uh, platforms and different chemistries then we have surface modification these are the like thing like slip coefficient of friction mar scrub rub resistance matting and resin modification of the surfaces so various brands and the chemistries are actually worked upon and the rheologically active additives these are like thixotropic agent gelling agent anti gelling agent anti settling agents lovely agents and flow and control all these are basically rheologically active additives which actually do the value addition in your formulations and then there are chemistries like when you talk about thixotropy then we are working on hue chemistry haze chemistry quaternary ammonium compound chemistry chemistries are very many very many they are never ending making of a community or a country or a chemistry or a technology is a never ending process it goes on even afterwards or it will continue 
before us also it was there and afterwards also will be there. Now the catalytic active like dryers conventionally, stabilizers like hindered amine mean light stabilizers, all those are catalytic active materials which are actually used for value addition. So when we talk about you know the uh, role of coating additives in value addition, then we actually have to see the four stages. We have to focus on the four stages that is manufacturing stage, storage stage, application stage and lifespan stage. That's what we committed as in our theory in a definition that additives are one which actually enhance, improve, modify, optimize the performances during manufacture, storage, application and lifespan. This was actually our commitment in the emblem in the first slide. So when we talk about value addition, the paints and coating additives and then the during a manufacturing stage, we are trying to make our sockets like we have to make use of surfactants, emulsifiers, wetting agents, dispersants, anti-foams, deformers and anti-flooding, anti-floating. Believe me, these are all surface active. You may have seen the hydrophilic lipophilic balance HLB from 0 to 24. So when we talk about deformer, they are 0 to 1 HLB value, very hydrophobic. They are incompatible substance. Many, many, many people I think, you know, they talk about soluble deformers, deformer solution, this is all humbug. Deformers means incompatible, insoluble material. Then we talk about surfactant and dispersant and ultimately emulsifiers. So many times the industry is actually totally at crossroad understanding what is emulsifier and what is surfactant and what is wetting agents. But dispersant, pakka, no issue. It is 6 to 9 HLB value. And 12 is emulsifier, ethoxylate. And then we talk about several other types of you know, uh, surfactants. Like I'll tell you some, some pictures quickly, you know, like, you know, poor wetting, wetting and emulsification. Then we have certain glade like acetylenic diols, we have fluorosurfactants and various other uh, Gemini diols, surfactants, which we are working on it. It is possible to do a perfect lowest critical Michelet concentration level CMC 0.1 and 0.2 to bring down the surface tension of water of 72 to 28.30. Then we have uh, theories of you know verticals and plans of you know dispersants which are wetting dispersion and stabilization where we talk about you know uh, Van der Waal forces we talk about Coulombian forces we are talking about total anisotropic enthalpy and then we talk about total repulsion should be higher than the attraction then only the dispersion is stabilized so those things are actually by ionic charges by steric charges we have something wrong here you are making somebody stand and this side is staircase. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So uh, the foaming is also an issue which is actually uh, comes in a value addition. Foam and deform and anti-foam are the various uh, uh, interwoven, uh, interlocked subjects <coughs> and interchangeably used misnomerly and misunderstandingly that what is deformer and what is anti-foam. It is deformer means which kills the foam and it is anti-foam which doesn't allow foam to generate. It means the two are totally different. Anti-foams are invariably usually silicones because they are incompatible substance. Deformers are some milder polymeric things but there are also non-silicone and non-mineral oil deformers are available which are being worked out. But these are foaming issues are very important because they interfere, hinder and prevent pigment dispersion. It's like Mercedes, somebody sitting and head on crash, the driver is saved because the balloon comes, the foam comes. Same way, when foam is present in your mill base, let it be any sophisticated mill base machine and all that. If there are micro foams, your pigment is prevented from the crash. So dispersion is incomplete. We are not able to put the whole enthalpy and lot of anisotropy, lot of, lot of, you know, I would say, uh, energy will go waste. It will be totally entropic situation. Entropic means randomness is very high. And that case, we need to understand the foaming, deforming, and deaerating and the technologies in value addition. Likewise color strength development and anti-flooding and anti-floating. 
very important to understand during manufacturing. During anti-settling, uh, during uh, storage uh, applications, we are making use of anti-settling agents, antioxidants, anti-gelling and thickening. Anti-settling we see because it is a buoyancy effect you need. You need somebody's pigments are settling down and there is a buoyancy effect and a reverse and then it is not settling. So there are many uh, uh, technologies such as haze, such as HUR, such as quaternary ammonium compound, bentonite clays, some as cellulose ethers. So there are many and also the surfactants. So anti-settling agents. Similarly, during storage, you have lot of oxidative polymerization, lot of uh, chelates, uh, the, the carboxylates act and they produce the free radical initiation, propagation and termination. So you have over polymerization. So those are antioxidants. Antioxidants are different than anti-skinning. This is also another fallacy in paint technology which is actually have to be understood. Likewise, gelling, three-dimensional gelling, lot of uh, anti-gelling chemistries are uh, percolated down here for value addition of paint technology. We have to understand that. Then there's gassing. There is a powder coating people will know the benzoins, benzoin things are as a degas agent. Similarly in water based systems also uh, and also in case of solvent base. These are the issues. Then viscosity drop is an issue. Many people in water-based chemistry, PPU, cellulose ethers, HPMC, HEC, CMC, and not knowing that these esters solvate, they thicken the water phase. But what happens, uh, the bacteria and the fungus and also the E. coli, streptococci, and so many other microorganisms, they eat that ester linkages and the viscosity comes down. So, and secondly, uh, actually we try to sometimes make, you know, like paint as a ice cream. And ice cream is meant for keeping in the freezer. Nobody keeps the paint in the freezer. So what happens after some time, there is a reduction in the viscosity. So there is a thixotropy and vis uh, viscosity drop is an issue which a paint technologist always confronts with this challenge. And value addition is important in these cases beyond cellulose ethers, hue chemistries, which are biostatic stable and thickeners. Then we have uh, during application stages like leveling, substrate wetting, uh, dryers, catalyst stabilization, gelants, resin modifier and plasticizers. We talk about rundown. We have to have anti-sagging compounds which are again, you know, the polyurethane chemistry and the polyamide waxes and the hue waxes. Then we have anti-sagging, the same similar things like sag control. In, this is in high, high body powder coating and also the high body, high viscosity and high solids, you know, plastic emulsion paints and also the stowing paint systems as well as high solids and also powder coating, this is very important. Then curtaining, then wrinkling, excessive, you know, polymerization. You may have seen that the linseed, the tongue oil and the cobalt, it gives you some kind of this. Then crawling is a leveling effect. Then lifting is a then this is orange peel effect, leveling chemistries are required. Then this is drying problems or then there are fish eye problems. Then there are crater problems. Then there are pinhole problems. And then chemistries, so then the popping problems. There are floating problems. And then there are silking problems. And then there are chemistries to solve them for value addition. Streaking problems. And then during the lifespan of the coat, paint and coating, we have rub resistance problems, slip, mar, scuff problems, adhesion problems, matting problems, UV absorption, hindered amine light stabilizers, and plus sizes. So we have sometimes yellowing is the biggest problem. Hindered amine light stabilizers are used various functions of to, uh, the embrittlement problems like plasticization, loss of plasticization and becoming high t uh, TG problems, then chalking problems, catalytic uh, oxidation of titanium dioxide and NRTs, then flaking of problems, then peeling problems, then poor adhesion, the loss of adhesion, chemical adhesion, mechanical adhesion. Those problems are worked in chemistries 
to add the value, then blistering problem, problems, then loss of gloss uh, problems and so value addition of paints and coating additives of surfactant, the uh, dispersants and the emulsifiers during manufacturing stages, this is some recommendation. Technical functions like deforming, de and sequester, there are some recommendations. Then technical functions like buffer and in kind preservations, there are some preservations, there are some recommendations during storage like thixotropy, anti-settling, anti-flooding, anti-gelling, anti-oxidants, anti-levering or viscosity stabilization, these are the certain recommended grades. And during application stages, we have gelling chemistry, we have metal carboxylate which help in the value addition of paints, leveling chemistry, substrate wetting like silicone polyethers and you know catalyst chemistries likewise some resin modifiers and also you know the curing agents are in the application stages during lifespan we have flexibility problems have to be addressed corrosion inhibition problem has to be addressed slip and migration of silicones on the surface and just in place curable of silicone the dry film preservations and rubs of the flame retardancy has to be addressed for value addition. Addition promoters have to be addressed to matting agents, UV absorbers, hindered amine light stabilizers. So basically the role of coating additive is, is beyond the horizons and it is actually never ending. We cannot, we really cannot pinpoint in isolation that we have found the truth. The role of additive system is one that absorbs well on colorant system, associates well with the resin system, disperses well in the solvent and diluent systems and performs to add value in manufacturing, storage, application, lifespan and the role of quality, right time, right price, right service and availability and the technical advice is a very important thing for helping you know uh, our people to help value addition and achieve value addition. Some of the guideline formulations uh, it is customary because uh, Dr. Harish said that our fraternity would need you know the formulations and I say there is nothing like formulation. I don't say everybody's truth is different you know everybody always always it is not the formulation. There is nothing ideal formulation exists for our VC said need to have regional. He said that. It means nothing is right and nothing is wrong. You have to be all inclusive. You have to be all compassionate. You have to understand surface requirement, prices, costing, applications availability of materials and then you have to see how to kabhi kabhi up ke bhasha mein bolte hain grahak ko dekh ke podiya bandhni padti hai grahak ko dekh ke podiya bandhni hoti this is how the paint technology because paint technology means you are yourself helping somebody to add value and if you do not understand that your role is aesthetics your role is to impart value to impart sophistication, to impart eliteness, to impart protection and sanitation. You cannot be callous. You have to be vigilant all along. And then everybody's formulations and every specific application's formulation is different. But since it is customary to give formulations, so I have written down based on the Technically, you know, uh, I would say with respect to how a, a, a layman, how a layman, how an ordinary person would understand it. See, basically what happens, all the technical people, they don't keep their critics near them. Nindak niere rakhiye angan kuti chavai. Hum apne nindak ko rakhte hi nipne paas. Actually, I keep my wife always in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> 
she is my critics uh, you understand it hum huh? so because <laughs> she doesn't understand anything and she is hit hmm? she, i mean this is the way the whole of the public is like that so i have i have actually you know demarcated you know with respect to one fundamental thing called pvc i'm not polyvinyl chloride pigment volume concentration everybody looks after sir humko matte chahiye humko mid gloss chahiye humko glossy chahiye humko interior chahiye exterior chahiye ye paint wale log seekhte hain to we have selected from that angle panch prakar ke ek general purpose primer phir low pvc emulsions interior mid pvc interior high pvc interior an exterior emulsion itni si baat hmm? up now in this we can we have actually uh, the prime uh, formulations which run uh, you have to understand the philosophy don't have to understand you know the materials which you have to keep trying idea is never ever try to disperse your pigment which are crystalline in material in a polymer never ever do. never ever because polymers are amorphous and the pigments and in extenders and fillers are crystalline crystal crystalline is solid and amorphous is having like spaghetti no no structure never ever do it always try to do the resin free pigment concentrate whether you are doing water basings water based coatings water based printing inks water based fluxo water based gravure any aqueous situation europe and americans have been trying to this is our grinding resin sir you grind it you see all polymer emulsions are delicate delicate um, surfactant stabilized or um, peptide or polysaccharide or you can say um, stabilized you know uh, emulsions like milk if you churn the milk what will happen dood phat jayega makkhan nikal aayega and that is what is happening most people try to do some kind of dispersion some type of resins are added high dg resins are added and we think that we have done job no we have destroyed the mechanical stability of a polymer and we have put and tried to force severely cohabitate mechanically mechanically our crystalline material into the amorphous material so that should not so the idea is mill base let down make up most important thing is पहले नहाओ साबुन लगाओ फिर कंडीशनर लगाओ फिर परफ्यूम और बाकी सजो दिस इज हाउ द मेकअप सो दैट्स वाई वी से मिल बेस लेट डाउन एंड मेकअप स्टैंडाइजेशन और स्टेबिलाइज दिस इज कॉमन एंड वेन वी टॉक अबाउट हाई बी वी सी यू यूज सिक्सटी सेवेंटी एटी परसेंट ऑफ कैल्शियम का अपोनेट प्रोरेटा polymer emulsion will be less so all primers 60 70% fillers and 10 20 30% of polymer emulsion important is value addition by additives ek rupaye ki mitti aap 100 rupaye ka paint kaise banate ho uske liye you need to understand the whole chronology the whole chemistry it is not possible ki that aap ek rupaye ka quartz ya ek rupaye ka mica aur pearl pigment banao 2000 rupaye ka छत्तीसगढ़ में हमारे कुछ लोग हैं माइका पिगमेंट बनाने वाले के आर पर्ल्स वाले मैं नाम लेता हूं झूमरी तलैया में उनसे माल लेकर के बड़ी बड़ी कंपनियां मल कॉर्पोरेशन ई मर्क लेके हजारों रुपए किलो का पर्ल भारत में देती आई उनका दो रुपए किलो का मट्टी नहीं ली उनसे वो बेचारे गधे उनको वैल्यू एडिशन ही करना नहीं आया सो इट इज लाइक दिस वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड द वैल्यू एडिशन द पर्पज ऑफ वैल्यू एडिशन एंड इंडिविजुअली इफ वी डोंट अंडरस्टैंड हम नहीं कर सकते कुछ so this is primer similarly low pvc emulsion these papers will be there with you so you don't have to put extra effort of taking photographs this will all be given low pvc emulsions mid pvc emulsions concept is same mill base let down make up and sanitization high pvc emulsions and exterior emulsions exterior emulsions we talk about slightly more that means we talk about uh, flexibility because exterior means thanda hoga mahol jyada garam hogi thandak hogi garam hogi as we say regional 
टेम्परेचर टाइम ह्यूमिडिटी कंडीशन लेटीट्यूड लॉन्गिट्यूड हवा का माहौल दबाव सब कुछ मिला करके यू नो दीज आर डिफरेंट थिंग सो यू हैव टू टॉक यू हैव टू एड्रेस फॉर योर वेल्यू एडिशन टू दीज डिसर्निंग वैगरी ऑफ वेदर लाइट फास्टनेस वेदर फास्टनेस सी आई टक टू डिग्री नॉर्थ फ्लोरिडा वी स्पेंड क्रोड्स ऑफ रुपीज बिलियंस ऑफ रुपीज फॉर ए स्मॉल स्पेस इन टू डिग्री नॉर्थ फ्लोरिडा फॉर putting our pigment 20 years then only this is possible to be formulated in automotive coatings all high performance perylene perinone benzimidazolone thiondugo quinacridones have been exposed for several years for delta e for light fastness and then they are formulated so a lot of pains have gone in today research technology chemistry engineering all are people are working with the full swing we have to understand these are way of life we don't have to worry about research we don't have to worry about chemistry engineering and technology we have to work about innovations we have to work about inventions we have to talk about discoveries if india doesn't go toward that path let me tell you we will remain be a cheap source supplier of chemistry engineering technology and research people from india and they will go and those people who are doing the innovations the discoveries and inventions will always be controlling us thank you very much for this this is all i wanted to tell you yeah yeah any any question from any any discipline whatever is yeah please 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 mm hmm बहुजन हिताय बहुजन सुखाए आप आके सामने पूछेंगे ना तो सबको पता लगेगा उससे आपका भी आत्मविश्वास बढ़ेगा और दूसरों को भी मार्ग मिलेगा सो इज देर एनी इंट्रोड्यूस योर सेल्फ फर्स्ट सो दिस इज आरती actually i'm working with base of coating very nice so i, I have question for you is there any anti corrosive corrosive additives available for you available with you see when we talk about corrosion mm -hmm. corrosion is a simple fundamental dissolution of metal by its own surrounding simple ek line ki baat yaad rakhna corrosion means nothing but dissolution of metal by its own surrounding surrounding mein kon kon hai hawa hai pani hai heat hai oxygen hai so any time when a metal goes it becomes me plus ek electron chhod deta hai wo wo ek electron pani ko hawa ko eight hydroxyl group banata hai aur piche reh jati hai jo metal jo positively charged hai wo eight hydroxyl ions aur ek metal plus mil kar ke metal hydroxide banata hai corrosion ho gaya ab isko rokne ke kai raste hain passivation hai pit ab kai tarah ke corrosion hai in fact corrosion conversion bhi bahut sare ke there are tannins there are triazoles There's so much of chemistry. So corrosion protection के लिए organic में passivation का एक रास्ता है, barrier coating का एक रास्ता है. तुम पूछ रही हो liquid organic corrosion inhibitor. वो मैं बताऊंगा. वैसे तो barrier सारे के सारे लोग जितने भी paint वाले हैं वो सब वही कहते हैं कि भैया हमने हवा को और metal से रोक दिया है. तो पानी नहीं जाएगा. तो hydroxyl ion नहीं बनेगी. हमारे यहाँ zinc phosphate वाले बैठे हुए हैं. जीबी सिंह जी वो कहेंगे साहब हम पिगमेंट देते हैं आपको <laughs> पैसिवेशन कर लेंगे हमारे यहाँ पॉलीमर वाले लोग बैठे हैं मोहन सिन्हा साहब एक्रिलिक पीव देते हैं इपॉक्सी देते हैं फिर भी आप प्रकृति के सिद्धांत को मानिए प्रकृति से आप जीत नहीं सकती आप उसको एक छोटा सा विंडो मिलेगा आपको छः महीने साल भर दो साल तीन साल एस एस टी कहते हैं आजकल हमारे यहाँ पेंट वाले लोग एस एस टी मतलब शॉर्ट्स पे टेस्ट एक हज़ार घंटा एलकेड पर काम करते हैं डेढ़ सौ घंटा नहीं सौ घंटा भी नहीं मिलता एलकेड में तो सबसे पहली बात तो है कि आपका आंचल क्या है आप सौगात लेना चाहती हैं हमसे ऑर्गेनिक लिक्विड करोजन इनिवेटर आपकी आपका आंचल क्या आप एल्किड में डालेंगी नहीं होगा नहीं होगा बड़ी बड़ी कंपनियां थूक पट्टी लगाती हैं थूक पट्टी पेंट ही थूक पट्टी है और वो भी लगाते हैं हमारा एस एस टी है एक घंटे डी ले जाओ सब लेते हैं एल्किड इज ए पॉलिस्टर इट डिजॉल्व इट सेल्फ बाई वाटर तो एल्किड के लिए कोई एडिटिव नहीं है बात आता है नेक्स्ट इपॉक्सी को गंदा ऐसा ही नंगा छोड़ दिया तो इपॉक्सी भी धुल जाएगा इपॉक्सी के ऊपर टू के 
पी यू वरना इपॉक्सी तो अब ये बात कंडीशन आ गई आई कैन प्रोवाइड इन सच कंडीशन नो एल्किड इपॉक्सी टू के पी यू ऑन द क्लियर वी हैव सेवरल क्रोजन इनिबिटर्स राइट फ्रॉम बेंजोट्रायोजॉल्स टू पॉलीएनिलीस इसका मतलब क्या होता है वी आर ट्राइंग टू ब्रेक द क्रोजन सेल और बहुत सारी चीजें जो छोड़ सकती वी हैव ए ब्रांड कॉल केक और अरे बिल्कुल वाई नॉट नहीं वो एक सब्जेक्ट है माइक्रोबेल करोजन ही है पिटिंग करोजन भी है बहुत सारे हाँ हाँ नहीं आप जिस आप जो माल बेच रहे हो उसकी बात नहीं मैं तो जनरल बात बता रहा हूँ माइक्रोबेल करोजन इज वन ऑफ देम पिटिंग आप देखो रेलवे के किनारे रेलवे की जो रेल्स हैं उसमें शिटिंग करते हैं लोग किनारे टट्टी करते हैं करते हैं ना वो सब करोजन होता है सारा का सारा स्ट्रेस करोजन होता है किसी को ये बात का पता नहीं कि आधा भारत रेलवे की पटरीयों के किनारे जाता है साहब के लिए बहुत बड़ा धंधा है आप समझे बात को वो पिटिंग कोरोजन फिलीफॉर्म कोरोजन बैक्टीरियल कोरोजन स्ट्रेस कोरोजन फैटी कोरोजन को छूने जाओ ना तो वो बोलेगा कि देखिए साहब मैं मेटल थी मैं धरती में थी अलग अपने ऑक्सीजन के साथ चुपचाप बैठे प्रेम विवाह करके बैठी थी आपने मुझे निकाल लिया आपने स्मेल्टिंग की फ्रॉथिंग की मेटलर्जी की बड़े बड़े आई कानपुर के निकाल दिया आपने और हमको अलग कर दिया हम तो फिर वापस जाएंगे जाएंगे कुछ भी करो मेटल विल गो टू ऑक्सीजन डिस्पाइट एनीथिंग हमारे सारे एडिटिव लेके चले जाओ तो भी दो तीन साल से चार साल से ज्यादा नहीं है ना उसका मतलब क्या है कंडीशंस यू हैव टू यू हैव टू पुट द कंडीशंस विच रेजन सिस्टम विच पॉलीमर सिस्टम व्हाट सीपीबीसी अगर आपने खुले क्षेत्र रख दिए आपने फॉर्मुलेट कर दिया अब सीपीबीसी लगाए रहो कोई भी बायोसाइड साहब का कुछ नहीं होने वाला नहीं नहीं अरे ऐसा ही होता है <laughs> हम कह रहे हैं हमारा लगा लो नहीं होता <laughs> नहीं धंधा नहीं धंधा बढ़ा रहा हूं हम कह रहे हैं अगर आपने छेद आपने दरवाजे की तरफ आपने ओ दे दिया सुन लो आपने सब बढ़िया आपने ओ दे दिया आपने सब अपने दे दिए और आपने कहा चोरी नहीं होगी चोरी तो होगी होगी ना क्योंकि आपने सब दे दिया है अगर आपके आपकी कोटिंग में छेद है परमिएबिलिटी है तो असली चीज तो जा ही रही है जो कि ऑक्सीजन जो कि प्रेम करती है आयरन से लोहे से वो तो बांध बंधेगी बट बिकॉज आप पता नहीं लगा पाओगे बहुत सारे मेटल में बिकॉज आस्पेक्ट रेशियो ऑफ मेटल टू मेटल ऑक्साइड इज एन इशू है ना <laughs> जैसे बिटिया हो तू हमारी एक मोटी औरत है वो प्रेग्नेंट होती है उसका चार महीने तक नहीं पता लगता है <laughs> लेकिन एक दुबली पतली है उसकी प्रेग्नेंसी पता लगती ऐसे ही मेटल है भाई लोग भाग जाते हैं आईआईटी वाले एचबीटीआई वाले यूडीसीटी वाले उन्हें पता ही नहीं लगता कि मेटल तो ऑक्सीजन बना ही रहा है मेटल ऑक्सीजन हो ही रहा है एम ई एन एम ई ओ इन्हें इक्विब्रियम स्टेट ये तो सिर्फ सिचुएशन क्या है बाकी भाग जाओ सारे कंसल्टेंट भाग जाते हैं मैं अभी आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट सो मनी वेस्ट बंगाल और उड़ीसा में चल रहे हैं वो सब मेरे कंसल्टेंट हमारे लड़के हैं आपको लेटिट्यूड लॉन्गिट्यूड हवा ह्यूमिडिटी सब कुछ पता करना होता फिर भी लोहा उसका जो प्रेम है ऑक्सीजन के प्रति वो आप खपन, नहीं खत्म कर सकते है ना यू कैन ओनली टेक ए लीव ऐसा दो महीने दो साल पांच साल एस एस टी एक एक हजार घंटा दो हजार घंटा तीन परमानेंट कुछ नहीं ये पूरी कुछ परमानेंट कुछ नहीं यू टू अंडरस्टैंड थैंक यू हेलो 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 सर आई एम नीरज पसारकर फ्रॉम आई सी ए पी डी लाइट प्राइवेट लिमिटेड आई सी ए पी डी लाइट प्राइवेट लिमिटेड आई हैव वन क्वेश्चन फॉर यू सर हाउ कैन वी इम्प्रूव द मार रेजिस्टेंस इन वाटर बेस्ड क्लियर वुड कोटिंग मार रेजिस्टेंस यस ओके Now, what do you mean by these are mechanical properties? Slip, yes, yes. mar, coefficient of with, friction, uh, and uh, with without alteration in transparency and other aesthetic uh, uh, properties. Uh, uh, basically, what happens? What is mar? Mechanical property, Deformation. rub resistance, mechanical property. Hmm? So you have inbuilt intrinsic polymer modification. That is one way. Other is thupatti, waxes, silicon. You know. ऑल दैट यू नो एक दिन का मेकअप चाहिए कि परमानेंट मेकअप चाहिए बताओ 
अगर एक दिन का मेकअप चाहिए यानी कि लग गया ठीक है बढ़िया है स्लिप है मारे तो देर आर मेनी एडिटिव एक दिन के लिए एक दिन का बादशाह बिल्कुल फर्स्ट क्लास बढ़िया ब्राइडल मेकअप यू कैन यूज स्लिप यू कैन यूज वैक्स दैट सिलीकॉन वैक्सेज पी टी एफ ई वैक्सेज डिस्पर्शन इन ह्यू सो मनी दूसरा रास्ता है परमानेंट परमानेंट में ये जितने भी तुम्हारे पीडी लाइट के बनाने वाले पॉलीमर इमल्शन तुम इस्तेमाल कर रहे हो वो सब बेकार है ना स्टाइन में वो बात है ना एक्रिलिक में बात है किसी में वो बात नहीं है तुम लोग टीजी में रह जाओगे जालना में नहीं चलेगा जबलपुर में चलेगा कश्मीर में नहीं चलेगा वहां चलेगा टीजी के ऊपर ही स्टाइरिन एक्रिलिक एंड प्योर एक्रिलिक्स विल ओनली गिव यू टेम्पररी रिलीफ यू हैव टू टेक हेमा दैट इज हाइड्रोक्सीथाइल मिथ एक्रिलेट यू हैव टू हेमा और उसके ओ एच ग्रुप को फ्लोरिनेशन करना पड़ेगा फ्लोरिनेशन दैट इज पिरीडीन विद फ्लोरिन एंड देन उसके ओ एच ग्रुप में फ्लोरिन हटा करके ग्यारह से पंद्रह परसेंट फ्लोरिन तुमको इनबिल्ट अपने पॉलीमर में डालना पड़ेगा तब होगा नहीं तो नहीं समझ में आया नहीं समझे साफ साफ से ले लेना बात थैंक यू सर ओके हो गया एनी बडी एल्स हाँ प्लीज आओ अरे पूछ लेते दो यार पूछ लेते दो इन लोगों लड़कों को पूछना मैं अपने एच में उन लड़कों को आगे बैठाता हूँ और जितने महानुभाव हैं उन सबको पीछे बैठाता हूँ और नहीं तो अगर कोई आता है हमारे यहाँ लेक्चर देने वो हम बोलते हैं तुम अगर वो महानुभाव आगे बैठे हैं तो हम बोलते हैं तुम वहाँ पर बैठ के बात करो इतनी दूर से नहीं उनके पीछे में जा करके क्योंकि सीखना उनको है बूढ़े तो होते नहीं सीखते यस मेरा नाम माधव उपाध्याय है मैं वर्धा से हूँ मेरे से हो वर्धा वर्धा बहुत बढ़िया गांधी जी के गांव से हाँ। बहुत सुंदर बात तो एक्चुअली मैं ये सब्जेक्ट का स्टूडेंट नहीं हूँ बहुत है? नया हूँ इसमें हाँ। तो दो क्वेश्चन है शायद सिली हो सकते हैं नहीं ना कोई क्वेश्चन हाँ। सिली नहीं है एक तो कि हम फॉर्मुलेशन के प्रति मतलब कैसा अप्रोच रखना चाहिए कि कोई एक पर्टिकुलर हमको अप्लीकेशन चाहिए या आ, कोई स्पेसिफिक चीज़ चाहिए मान लीजिए फ्लोर कोटिंग बनाना है अब यहीं रुको यहीं रुको तो ना पहला पहला क्वेश्चन है क्या अप्रोच रखनी चाहिए ठीक है ना और तुम उस सब्जेक्ट के नहीं हो ठीक बहुत बढ़िया बात तुम सबसे सुंदर व्यक्ति हो क्योंकि उस फील्ड में जो बड़े बड़े नड़े हुए व्यक्ति हैं वो सीखेंगे नहीं यू आर सच ए नाइस पर्सन दैट यू आर ऑल इंक्लूसिव एंड यू आर ओपन तो सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट चीज है पहला इंपॉर्टेंट चीज है यू हैव टू बी ऑल इंक्लूसिव बंद विचारों से नहीं सोचो अगर तुम फॉर्मुलेशन करने बैठे हो तो प्री मॉनिस्ट आइडियाज प्री कंसीव आइडियाज आर तुम्हारे सबसे बड़े दुश्मन दे आर द बिगेस्ट एनिमीज यू हैव ठीक है ना तो तुम तो बहुत सुंदर व्यक्ति हो यू डोंट हैव एनी प्रीमोनिश आइडियाज है ना तो यू आर फिट नाउ व्हेन यू आर डूइंग दैट तो फिर सबको देखो सब समझो किसको क्या चाहिए किससे क्या होता है फॉर्मुलेशन इज एक्चुअली इट इज लाइक दिस ओके आई गिव यू एग्जाम्पल तुम्हारी मदर कितने पढ़ी हैं तो दसवीं तक पढ़ी टेंथ तक टेंथ पास ठीक तुम एक काम करो तुम मोहल्ले में जाओ पूरे शहरों में जाओ भारत से भारत के बाहर बड़े बड़े फाइव स्टार होटलों में उन जिनके पास शेफ भी बहुत बढ़िया बढ़िया है सेलिब्रिटी है खूब बढ़िया बढ़िया खाना बनाते हैं खूब पढ़े लिखे हैं खूब पढ़े लिखे लोग हैं ठीक है उनका खाना खाओ खाओ छः महीने फिर तुम जब घर पर पहुँचोगे तो अपनी अम्मा से बोलोगे हमको बना दो और वो जो बनाएगी तुम्हारी आत्मा तृप्त हो जाएगी वो जानती है क्या उसका कोई मुकाबला है उस पढ़े लिखे लोगों से सेलिब्रिटी से नहीं ना बिकॉज शी नोज शी डजन नो केमिस्ट्री ये दाल चावल सब्जी रोटी रखे उसकी केमिस्ट्री उसको नहीं पता है वो जो तुम्हारे चिमटे तवा जो तुम्हारी गैस है उसकी इंजीनियरिंग उसको नहीं पता है शी इज़ द टेक्नोलॉजिस्ट शी इज़ योर मदर शी नोज कि तुम आओगे तुम ये खाओगे और तुमको वो ही वो बना के देगी तो फॉर्मुलेशन में मदरिंग इंस्टिंक्ट होनी चाहिए यू डोंट हैव टू नो एनी इट इज इमीटीरियल हमको भी कहां पता है कुछ यू हैव टू एक्ट लाइक योर मदर कि जब सामने बैठो तो मेरा बच्चा आएगा या मेरा बेटा आएगा पति आएगा ये क्या खाएगा इसको क्या पसंद है वो भावना से बहुजन हिताए बहुजन सुखाए की भावना से ऑल कंपैशन ऑल इंक्लूसिव भावना से जो करोगे दैट विल बी द फॉर्मुलेशन समझे तो ये पहले सवाल का जवाब था दूसरा सवाल पूछो दूसरा पहले का एक कंटिन्यूएशन है कि 
दूसरा क्वेश्चन यही था कि जो डेटा हर कोई डेटा शीट दे देता है कि हम आपको मेल कर देते ये कर देते डेटा शीट बहुत आता है लेकिन डेटा शीट में से कौन कौन सी चीजें हमको ध्यान में रखना है ये अप्रोच के वक्त एक मिनट वो पैकेजिंग है यार तुमने सबसे पहले फाड़ के फेंक देना चाहिए समझे किसी का डेटा शीट आए उसको पहले फास्ट फाड़ के फेंक दो चलो पैकेजिंग समझते हो ना पैकेजिंग अगर कोई भी चीज खाते हो संतरा खाते हो केला खाते हो तो उसका जो पैकेज है ये तुम अपने कैडबरी खाते हो तो उसका पैकेज हटा देते हो ना असली चीज देखो ना यार एम एस डी एस पी टी डी एस सी ओ ए लिटरेचर ये वो ये तो सब पैकेजिंग है ठीक है दे आर देर बट जो है पैकेजिंग उस पर कोई ध्यान नहीं दो सब्जेक्ट पे ध्यान दो केमिस्ट्री पे उसकी है ना थैंक यू Thank you for the remarkable presentation, sir. I now request uh, Shinoy sir to please felicitate our guest, uh, our speaker, Dr. S. C. Shivasthav sir, with the bouquet and the moment. Applause, please. Thank you. Yeah. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now the question from our side. I would like to call upon Sushmit Sen from our team. we would like to honor our guest uh, dr s shivasa so i request him to please uh, stay on the dais thank you sir sushmit now you can take it forward good afternoon everyone so the first question is basically in high pvc emulsions what is the amount of fillers that we use like the percentage of fillers yes hari yes. and for the second question what kind of chemicals do we use mainly as anti foaming agents bhusha so i would like to take one second today is bengali new year and being a bengali i would like to wish everyone a very happy new year thank you sushmit 
सो नाउ विल ब्रेक फॉर द लंच सो ब्रेक विल बी फॉर एन आवर आफ्टर एन आवर विल रिज्यूम ओके सो द लंच इज अरेज दैट पीडी लाइट पवीलियन ओके
understand the whole chronology, the whole chemistry. It is not possible कि that आप एक रुपए का quartz या एक रुपए का mica और pearl pigment बनाओ दो हजार रुपए का। छत्तीसगढ़ में हमारे कुछ लोग हैं mica pigment बनाने वाले K R pearls वाले मैं नाम लेता हूँ। झूमरी तलाईया में उनसे माल लेकर के बड़ी-बड़ी कंपनियां मल कॉरपोरेशन ईमर लेके हजारों रुपए की लोग अपर्ल भारत
of civil industry colleagues are here, so they are very well about this uh, basic software. And, but since uh, we have a students in the audience, so I thought of putting the basic slide as well. So what is color? So color is nothing but uh, a, a, a gift from the universe, which is a beauty. I believe uh, color doesn't exist. It is just a reflection of light. If we see in our today's life, color is everywhere. We wake up in the morning, we go to for brushing, we use a toothpaste, which is, which is of having you know different colors. We go to bath, we use a different soaps and shampoos, there is a color. Uh, once we go for uh, ready for our office, we uh, see our kitchen cabinets, those are colored, our painted house again colored. We go to office by our color, a car or bike, that's again painted. So color is now kind of, you know, a very integrated part of our life. Color is our life. So if we see here, there are maybe some people, they have a kind of, you know, uh, super power, they might see the other range of uh, wavelengths. Now, how we see color? So there is a light source, then we have an object, and then we have an observer. When the light source gate uh, strikes on the object, there are certain wavelengths gets absorbed, and the wavelength which gets reflected, which also gets sensed to our brain. So the reflected light is the actual color. So in case of the picture one, wherein all the light source, when it is getting uh, strikes on the object, all the lights are getting reflected. So that's the reason the object is appearing white. However, in the case of uh, red and green, that particular wavelength is only getting reflected and others are getting absorbed. So that's the reason we could see a typical those color. Uh, now color. Uh, color can be expressed through our communication or through our emotions everything. Each this color has its own personality. Let us take a classic example of our daily routine of traffic signal. So there is a red and there is a green. Why red give a sign of you know alertness? Take an example of, of our blood. Whenever the blood is coming out through our body, we feel like you know it's a danger. So it's a sign of danger. And more scientifically, it is also from the longest wavelength so that it travels a longer distance without any scattering, which is the reason why red is uh, for the symbol of alertness. However, the green, sim the green color, it's of course a nature color as well as even the doctors also uses the same color and we feel safe. And more scientifically, again, it's in the middle range of the visible spectrum. So it's a safe to go. Secondly, uh, we have been, you know, attracted towards the color since our childhood days. Even the infants or newborn babies, if they are crying, and if we just give them few color toys, they stop crying. So since then, we have been attracted towards the color. And that is the reason why we like everything around us colorful. Our old television also have now become a colored one. The black and white mobile phones are also now a uh, colored display of the smartphones. Even the smallest to smallest house is also now colored. So around us, it's everything is colorful. Now we just spoke about color. Now, how to incorporate this color into our paint formulation? So what is the coloring matter? So what we have is a pigment. But can we use the pigment as such into our formulation? No. It has to be used in the dispersed form. So how can we use it? So it needs a grinding procedure. So we have a pigment uh, particles which we receive in uh, which is in clusters form or in the agglomerates form, which needs to be broken down into primary particles. And again, we need to keep them apart so that it should not get re-agglomerate 
and we will end up in having a flocculation into our paint formulation. So what are the pigment dispersion process? We, uh, there are three basic stages, the weighting, dispersing and the stabilization. So what happens mainly in the weighting? There is a drastic reduction in the surface tension difference between the pigment and the resin particles and there is a displacement of air particles with the pigment particles. In the second stage of dispersion, there is a mechanical destruction of the pigment particles or the pigment clusters. And the third stage wherein this stage prevents the reflocculation of pigment particles. Of course, uh, Srivastava sir also had mentioned in detail about this production uh, process. Uh, but we have to keep one thing in mind, this is a basic process but it also varies depending on the chemistry of pigments because of its surface area, surface energy and we need to take care of while designing a formulation, we need to uh, select the right binder, solvent, even the surfactant and the right ratio of binder to solvent and pigment to binder. Now we spoke about color, we spoke about pigments, we spoke about pigment dispersion. Now we'll come to coatings. So if we take a uh, scenario of architectural paint, it is largely sold through point of sale tinting system, especially in India. There are more than 80,000 tinting machines are installed in the Indian market and approximately 3,500 metric ton colorant is being used every month. So we can imagine how much quantity of paint is getting sold every month. So there is a huge potential. So this is the basic equation uh, when it comes to point of sale tinting system. We have a paint base and then colorant. And being a colorant manufacturer, we have to ensure that our colorant should be compatible with n number of bases which are available in the market because every manufacturer, they develop their bases with a different, different raw materials. So we have to ensure it has to be compatible with different bases. So this is the basic equation. The second foremost criteria is the when it comes to point of cell tinting system is the accuracy and the consistency because the tinting happens di directly in front of the end user and there is no second chance we have to be right at the first time so our colorant should dispense it accurately and also the pro product what we supply has to be consistent batch after batch year after year and with the point of sale tinting system, we can offer millions of shade with the selected set of colorants. But that was about the uh, previous kind of uh, scenario of architectural, which is now a bit changing. Now architectural coating is also going through a great changes since last couple of years. So how it is changing? With respect to raw material base, because there are a lot of advancements happening in the emulsion technology. There are a couple of titanium replacements are also coming in. There are very fine micron extenders are also coming in, which can be uh, have uh, alternate source to titanium, which also has been briefed by Mr. Hemang in the previous presentation. Then environmental profile, uh, more and more uh, the coating manufacturer also have started adopting the uh, global environmental regulations, then the performance properties. Now the end user also have started demanding for uh, high chroma colors or you know uh, high demand on durability and even the smart finishes. So at the same time all these properties to be achieved with a very lower cost. So this is the current scenario. And who are the drivers for these changes? Who is bringing this change? First is the synthesis chemist. Of course, it is from the supplier side. They also keep doing innovation, uh, considering the global market as well as the new trends or the futuri considering the futuri futuristic trends. Second one is the paint formulators, which are nothing but the coating manufacturers. 
they also do certain innovation considering the new customers requirement as well as differentiating themselves than the competition then the environmental regulate regulations as as i already spoke so there are couple of uh, environmental regulations are coming in like you know people want a low voc product or odor free product or heavy metal free product so and then the end users like, like as i said in the previous slide the end user is also getting more and more demanding they also demand for a number of uh, like you know we want a high glossy product we want uh, so and so scrub resistance or alkali resistance so these are the drivers of change which is bringing this ch change into the uh, market now what are the technical challenges to adopt these changes because we as a colorant manufacturers are also a follower of paint industry whatever the changes are happening at the paint manufacturer we need to adopt these challenges so one of the requirement came in the voc level reduction so the major challenge with the voc level reduction is we need to replace this hazardous raw material with the safe alternates and the requirement of voc reduction is 50 less than 50 g per liter and the the conventional system which has a glycol we need to replace those we need to use a apo free surfactant we need to use a safer biocides but you know at the same time if you are going for a voc reduction it also has certain disadvantage or certain limitation we may end up in having a inferior canister stability or poor rheology or poor dispensability and also it also affects on the paint film we have a solution to overcome all those challenges we have a product called smart tint machine colorant using which we can avoid all those challenges right on the right hand side we have a conventional system wherein we have latex particle associated with the thickener and the surfactant when our uh, smart tint low voc colorant gets uh, uh, mixed with the combination what it does is it breaks the linkage between the thickener and the latex particle and it forms the bond amongst these two uh, uh, material so to prove this we also have done certain experimental work what we have done is we have taken a standard colorant then standard low voc colorant and the smart tint low voc colorant we have uh, added in different proportion like the blue indicates we have added in 2% the red one we shows the addition of 5% and the gray one we shows the addition with 10% of colorant so from the left hand side where it, it shows that there our with usage of our colorant there is a minimal viscosity drop compared to the conventional colorants which is a kind of biggest challenge when we try to use low voc colorant into our formulation the second challenge is the compatibility because this voc free colorants are typically hydrophilic in nature which ultimately impacts on the color development in the other bases like you know long oil alkyd enamels so the perfect balance of surfactant is very essential and this martin colorant shows the enhanced compatibility in all types of base so the image also can show uh, we have taken an example of yellow oxide and blue 150 on the right hand side draw down with our colorants there is no flocculation or flotation the third challenge is the canister stability uh, with the low voc colorant uh it is very hard to dispense the colorant because uh, there is a, a drastic reduction in the viscosity but with the smart colorant since it contains a high number of surface active agents which prevents the pigment agglomeration and the dispense and without affecting the dispensability so we spoke about uh, uh smart tint uh, overall we have a uh, two more products as a part of color solution for architectural coatings we have a hydra tint aqueous paste which we normally use it for tinting of uh, factory made sheets it comes in bulk packing then we have product called tintol a very popular product which comes in a very smaller pack 
and recommended for on site tinting so that was about the uh, uh, architectural coating which is a part of decorative coating now how about wood coatings and enamel which are also a part of decorative coating so we do have a color solution for wood coatings in both like we have a colorants for water based wood coatings uh, which are voc free heavy metal free these are also en71 chapter 3 certified which is a requirement uh, for the toys manufacturer we have entire range of colorants including uh, inorganics and all the organics all the colorants or the pigments used are uv stable or uv durable these colorants are also us fda 175.300 certified of course this is not a very popular market in india but it is a very growing segment then we do have uh, colorants for solvent based wood coating we just touched upon water based we have colorants for solvent based wood coating this is one of the fastest growing segment in india uh, earlier people were dependent on the italian or the spanish source but we do have a very reliable solution to overcome uh, or the alternates to these imported colorants the product is uh, itin colorants these are universal industrial colorants this also can be used for point of sale tinting system as well as for implanting implant uh, tinting these are again uh, based on very uh, exterior pigment grades having a very excellent uv stability having a very high tinting strength and uh, having a shelf life of more than 24 months these when we say universal these are compatible with various industrial resin system like you know we have a pu wood coating we have a nc wood uh, nc wood coating melamine wood coating so the same product can go for this multiple uh, resin systems if we talk about enamel uh, so if we roughly consider the decorative paint segment in india 70% of the market is captured by the architectural paint segment and 30% is by enamel of course conventionally enamel is very popular but there is a new trend coming in which is do it yourself but why is it is so important because it is ready to use it all works on multiple surface it gives a smooth finish fast drying and also cost effective so of course we have a product for this application needless to mention uh, we are committed to deliver a precise color batch to batch year after year so that was about the color solution for the decorative paints and coatings uh, some other range what we have uh, just I'll, i would like to touch upon uh, the solvent free uh, epoxy coating we have product called blend for pu flooring we have a product called ultra tint very recently uh, we have introduced uh, a new vertical uh, we have a colorant for cosmetics uh, then i mean colorants for nail polish uh, eyeliner mascara etc and then we the product called aura tint is a colorant for home care the colorants for uh, soaps and detergents and even the hand washes everything uh, so that's all uh, we have uh, color solution for all your coloring needs and we want to be an integrated part of your coloring life of course we love all colors but green is one of our favorites thank you Thank you, sir. Yes. Right from the childhood, I have told and trained to call these as a black. Yeah. I do not know whether everybody looks at the same black the same way. Is a sensation common all throughout the world? It's the structure of our eyes, sir. Uh, it's I more or less same. Is there any research done on that color part of it? Possibly, can answer it better. See, basically, there is the undertones are there. All are black, but there is a different undertones are there. 
uh, some uh, 100% uh, that's called one is called cur perfect uh, black it's absolute 100% uh, no, no, what i need mean to say the sensation which i get as a black mm -hmm. is what i been told you call it as a black mm -hmm. i thought this is yellow mm -hmm. it may happen that it may not be yellow to me but something else so he said it's such is a black in color it's a it's a perception basically it's a perception yes it's a perception there is a yellow is a so we, we are told yellow that's why it's yellow that's yellow. yellow is a perception yes. yeah. nothing to relate to you but i always have a lingering question sir i would like to add more on that so in the first slide he had mentioned there's a light that's the source there's the object and then there's our eye so light remains the same object remains the same the perception in our eye changes from person, from person to, to person person so yes you are right something that may be black to you may not be that to me because the it's black yeah. to everybody but only thing is told it's the black, black is dirt, it? so that's right. why we are saying yeah. it's black it's a it's a topic for the artificial smart coatings yes yeah so uh, yeah so uh, we do have certain colors which are very transparent in nature which can ultimately give a kind of you know a very bright and metallic finishes which can also be incorporated into metallic finishes which can give a very special effect i have mentioned the special effects spot coating is mostly related to polymer maybe the polymer Yes, thank you, sir. So, for the question from our side, I would like to call upon Amrita Chatterjee. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I have two very simple questions. First of all, uh, what are the three different process of pigment dispersion? Yes. Yes, uh, and another question is, what's the nature of uh, VOC-free colorants? It's amphiphilic, hydrophilic, hydrophobic, hydrophilic, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Amrita. Uh, now, I would request uh, Tipanna, sir, to please felicitate our speaker, Deepak Chinchole, sir. Thank you, sir. 
Now I request Dr. Tipanna sir to please introduce our next speaker. Thank you, Deepak, for your uh, nice presentation. You have very well covered the definition of the color and the various pigment dispersion and the various applications of the pigments in various, uh, various fields. Now, the today second speaker is Dr. Prakash Patare. He is a director, Melzer Chemicals Private Limited, PhD from IIT Bombay. He has been in the indus in industry for more than 50 years, having worked in pharmaceutical, petrochemicals, construction chemicals, and he also worked in Asian paints, have worked in Europe for some periods, was earlier known as uh, the father of the polyurethane coating technology in India, having introduced PU coating as, a, uh, as also the first aqueous two component epoxy coating in 1984-85. Introduced airworthy PU coatings for the India's compact aircraft project in 1988-89. The project was assigned to him by none but Sir A.P. A.P.Z. Abdul Kalam is the as then director of the DRDO, and with the home he held pleasant personal working experience and proud, uh, proud mem memories. The achievement of developing airworthy PU coating for uh, fighter aircrafts meeting very uh, meeting very strict requirement on it was obviously certified by Dr. Kalam in 1993 after its very uh, rigorous testing carried out for two over two years. Dr. Patare was also one of the experts for proving the cause of Bhopal accident which took place in December 1989. Have been working in the field of biocides for over 40 years, now having done many um, original contribution to the subject and taking global patent on them. Have presented more than 80 lectures in the span of 50 years in the industry. He has been promoted his uh, newer theory of in individual psychology in some uh, circles. He is known as the artist, having held exhibitions of his painting and having sold a few too. In April 27, uh, 2017, he suffered very badly while in the, uh, while in the international flight with a SPA member, Le leading to cardiac arrest and death, but was somehow revived revived. He holds a few major handicap, uh, handicaps today due to such in incidents. In, me in medical terms, he became five years old on April 10, 2020 after his said rebirth in April 2017. Today, he will be speaking on the biocides and we are looking for a good uh, know-how from him. Thank you. Generally, I don't like to stand at one place while lecturing, but unfortunately, there is a step over here. So, good that somebody can find me over here, right? But anyway, so I'll be talking today on the biocides. In 30 minutes to cover this subject is rather impossible. So, what I'll be doing is only the, uh, the glimpses of it from the point of the criticalities of the subject. And the criticality is whether they reach us, whether they reach everybody, and whether we really look at this particular subject rightly is what my aim today is. So I'll be joining all of you in this particular discussion because this discussion is not related to the subject. This discussion or this lecture of mine or this presentation of mine is answering or related to your questions, which I have received many often and from those point of view, everything has been presented. Just to, just to go ahead. Which one? Oh. I'll just skip. So who are we? We are concerning ourselves as the Indian specialty chemical manufacturers uh, and exporters of antimicrobial preservatives. That is our one of the major areas, uh, we differentiate them from biocides slightly. There is a reason behind it. Other super specialty polymers, which we give most, mostly for the oil and gas sector. Other specialty treatment polymers and the products for the wastewater treatment. 
water is going to be scarce commodity hereafter and so the last portion is very very important these are our manufacturing facilities presently we manufacture 12000 metric tons of biocide if you consider 12000 metric tons and 0.2 and 0.5% usage it's a big volume uh, we are today with the largest manufacturers of biocide in india and possibly one of the largest in the southeast asia but what is our recognition our recognition is a technology leader in the field of antimicrobials we have got a quite a few original contributions in this uh, personally we hold patents anyway so this is just the case uh, our entire organization is governed our operations are governed by eco social governance so whatever we do is basically oriented toward the social welfare be sure about it so i already respond uh, shown what is our commitment level commitment is towards ethical biocide now what is ethical biocide we'll discuss about it as and how we go ahead right and balance of ecology progress in economics you can't come back you have to go further for achieving traceable social benefits the word traceable is important we are accountable for this traceability my fundamental question do we use biocides in paints we don't i mentioned many times that we use the antimicrobial preservatives unfortunately when this subject came to india and when it reached a organization like cib who are considered as a regulators for the biocide everybody in the world everybody from the mnc companies and a quite a few enthusiastic people in india kept on talking that we give we give a fungicide we give algicides we give this we give that and it become a major subject though we don't do algicides we don't give fungicides we are giving antimicrobials to preserve the paint when you talk about giving algicide fungicide you are talking about killing something which is not a your topic a killing something in the nature can also be interpreted as a algicide fungicide bactericide or biocide so please remember none from paint industry should hereafter talk that we require biocide no you require antimicrobial preservatives if you don't stick to it the regulators are going to run behind it so this i am not threatening anybody but let's be the wise hereafter right uh, uh, some of the portion i can skip so that i can talk little more antimicrobials are absolutely essential for us without antimicrobials we cannot live economy will be suffering very badly because of the wastage of the products which will happen which cannot be used so you require antimicrobials all throughout now many chemicals can be considered as a possibly uh, uh, microbial it has got antimicrobial effects you can't use each and every one of them as a antimicrobial preservative it is not possible at all so there are well studied products which can be used if you go back to the history of the biocides or antimicrobials or in general as a as a preservative section somewhere in the year 1978 there were about 982 uh, technical grade ingredients which were considered as possible to be used for the uh, for the industrial products then there were revision as and how the new knowledge came in and today only around 252 active ingredients are permitted to be used e europeans had distributed them in 18 or rather 22 different product groups and those product groups again each product group what is permitted what is not permitted is very well written so when we talk about paint industry we have to follow basically such broad outline which has been given by the global regulators we can't go beyond that why for one reason these are well studied materials secondly now your market is a global market so we have to align with the global requirement with the global follows whatever is being followed by them now obviously their usages and dosages have been very well regulated or are being talked about most important part of it anybody who wants to offer any biocide or any antimicrobial preservative anybody to anyone 
must hold talks later on it today i have been observing anyone comes forward makes a similar kind of a formulation approaches a industry and gives a material as antimicrobial preservative talks that he doesn't have msds or isds he copies down from somebody else's so material looks identical you do not know what is going to happen now my question comes on what is social responsibility and social recognition these are very dangerous material not that they kill only microbes their excess is going to affect us very very badly so one just cannot use something in the paint the question is do the biocide from the paint or the antimicrobials from paint reach anyone this question was also discussed like anything at the indian regulators called cib to such a details and there were so many controversial answers which were coming also from the various association paint association which made the subject extremely com- complicated and because of this complication even today there is no decision which has taken out there are a lot of court cases which are pending in the country one of the court cases will come today i mean uh, for the hearing in the next month on 17th may 2023 which will dramatically change the situation in the country because the people are aware what is what i mean we can't make a new role in india at the same time we want to align ourselves with the global uh, uh, businesses it cannot match so let us follow what is being globally followed is my one simple request and principle very important topic antimicrobial preservatives are also required for the corrosion control coating if the time permits i'll be again talking on it separately as dr chakta has requested me to do it but i introduce this right back so many years back in fact the air worthiness coating the only air worthiness coating manufactured or formulated in india is by me in which we used the antimicrobial in 1988 uh, this is according to mil standard mil is for military specification this is according to us um, military specification it l- literally lays down what is required for the arresting microbial corrosion of aircraft because it is very sensitive subject if something goes wrong the aircraft is going to come down right so don't be under impression that antimicrobials are required only for the aqueous coating no they are required even for the corrosion control coating right more i will elaborate later if the time permits typically this is what you all know this is exactly what we do ex- when we manufacture paint so it's a diagram uh, diagram has been given only to see Uh, you can take a photograph because when you look at this photograph and this i am going to use it again little later to elaborate each and every component on your right on my left what i have written over here in short that will be elaborated little later in aqueous coatings we generally talk about two kind of preservatives in can and dry film even in the year 2022 23 and 23 24 european regulations are still talking about in can preservatives melzer doesn't we don't we changed that concept right in the year 2003 we call it as a wet state preservative in the field of biocides in the field of antimicrobials for paint especially for the paints there are too many misconceptions and myths which have been already existing and is continuing as on today one of the myths which originated from the in can preservative is head space protection everybody talks about the paint in the can requires head space protection why does it require it the can is completely sealed you have already had added antimicrobial preservatives whatever is going suppose it exists over there it will condense down it will get killed 
you don't require anything in the uh, as a headspace protection in the paint which is completely un- in the seal but still headspace protection is being talked about by everybody except us it's a complete a myth myth for the reason why uh, i'll explain you again so we say you require headspace protection when you open the paint tin for usage because now your paint is exposed to huge space from the meniscus topmost layer of the paint to the sky in which microbes exist and microbes can enter so you require this protection for that so our concept of headspace protection is that till the wet paint is completely consumed it should be protected once the can is open and that is the responsibility on the buy side supplier now why this headspace protection and why this kinds of concepts came possibly people are not aware of most of you may not be knowing about it that there is a quorum sensing syndrome in microbes a microbe can exist it can escape suppose the the, the a preservative which you are added is not sufficient or is not working some microbes may not die the surviving one thereafter tries to sense who else can stay uh, 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 live with me who else can survive with me and that is cell to cell communication and that is how you can see the colonies of the uh, of the microbes of different species can also exist together right now this is the reason people sense that oh there must be some mutation and that is the reason you require to change the wet state preservative or in can preservative quite often how many of you have heard that practically everybody must have heard that wet state preservative or in can preservative needs to be changed because microbes show mutation no they don't show mutation they can't because the preservatives which we are supposed to be giving you are supposed to be acting in multiple direction if it is a straight line direction it can be blocked when it is multiple direction it cannot be blocked what are the multiple directions there are ways of acting on the cell on the, on the tissue by electrostatic or a kind of a, a, a potential difference so all of them have to be working simultaneously but this is one of the most important thing which i have been talking about so wet state preservative point number 2 over there wet state preservative supporting such kill it it doesn't allow the the uh, quorum syndrome of the microbes okay, i'll just take a look. do you know what really happens when the paint gets stored for long time you all are distributing paints through the distribution channels distributors hold them for maybe 6 months maybe 4 months may not be holding it the climatic conditions keep on changing A lot of shops display paint outside at the end of it take them inside temperature goes up during day during night the temperature goes down delta t sometimes is 20 20 degrees centigrade imagine you have been told that certain preservatives when you add you should not be adding beyond certain such a temperature because they are sensitive to temperature how many of you have heard it everybody right but you never considered that this paint which is manufactured is going to have such a fluctuation then what is going to happen to the preservative when you can when you are actually going to use it this is the thing which has to be understood unfortunately it has not been understood so what people do just keep on duplicating what somebody else does we have literally worked on those aspects and so how to preserve such paints now why it is required it is required because all because this will change the composition of paint so finally it will not give the performance as you expected chemical changes versus antimicrobial properties this is the equation 
which we have to always solve always remember that we expect performance from every liter if it is expected from every liter we have to work to see to it that every liter is usable to the person who doesn't know what is microbe who doesn't know what is deterioration by microbes who doesn't know what is performance he wants only his pain to last and he wants worth of his money back that's it if that is a case then the entire responsibility comes down to this person or people who are in the field of antimicrobials what can be done i now come to this chart which we have seen now i come to the this part of it other part of it now these are the variants different polymer emulsions nobody wants to keep too many inventories in the factory so do we have to have a different kind of a, a preservative for all throughout no you can't so you will require to do some summation but the main problem is different main problem when you talk about emulsion is when you supply the emulsions in tanker load and when your customer receives in tanker load and stores in tanker and he withdraws every day only a small quantity of it as per his requirement tank is of 40 tons or 50 tons and what he requires in a day is 1 ton 1 and 1/2 ton when you withdraw that material air gets sucked in right and with air lot of microbes lot of dust gets sucked in how are you going to preserve your paint now when you have made excellent emulsion when you have added adequate dose when you manufactured it when you have supplied it was okay but there after it failed doesn't that complaint come back to you it comes to you so you require a solution solution can be worked out let us work it out the same way different extenders in the morning we talked about so many several ex- extenders and these and that first come first out never happens in paint industry the bags and bags of extender remain on the floor and with every bag you are adding billions and billions and billions of microbes inside the paint the moment you keep on delaying the usage of the extenders you are adding more and more challenges to your paint and you expect the paint and and the, uh, and the supplier of the preservatives to give the performance so you require a solution for that different additives we have been hearing lot of additives right from the morning dr shivastha presented them different chemistries against all these chemistries your basic ingredient has to remain stable and stable when stable when the paint is stored when the fluctuation goes up and down all those kind of variations you have to do it did we study this we did not we have studied it we have taken patents on such aspects as well different storage period just now i touched upon it facing very now usage dilution of a paint any water being used this is a usual problem which we talked about so if you look at it what you are creating you are creating a bigger risk always remember that if you are manufacturing say 10 tons of a paint in a day and if one batch gets spoiled your entire profitability of the entire month is completely wiped out because that spoiled paint cannot be recirculated at all if even if you decide to add it in smaller lots into the fresh batches you are going to create and challenge more and more of your fresh paints you cannot say that i'll add excess by side and then we'll try to do it or we'll try to sell it for but no you are spoiling so if that is a the case then your original choice of preservative have to be perfect and the person or people giving to you are accountable for that should be the situation myths and misconcept i just told you about one but there are several myths since we don't have much time some myths i am going to cover in the dry films which will be there but this is the thing which is really a worry some duplicators of the material it is very easy to sell by side saying that yes i am also giving you 1.5 percent of so and so and this is what it is what you give as a impurity profile of that material is more important 
and not the purity not the active content not the active content you require to have a tox data if you don't have a tox data please don't talk about giving 1.5% purity or 10% this or 20% bit well it is completely meaningless because you are going to create a challenge to yourself you are going to create a challenge to unknown uncounted customers of yours who do not know what buy side is and what risk they face simple many of them are cmrs unfortunately when such impurities exist the performance of such material is far better why it is better because those are toxins they will work on you also why and only why in microbes but people will say what no that product is suitable for me because it gives give, give good results now this is the problem which globally people have been talking about that how to resolve it because the prevalence of cmr cancer is 3 out of 10 mutagenic reproduction uh, reproduction uh, uh, defects number is increasing and these are getting passed by generations they don't remain only with that sufferer it gets passed on to the generation by side line is becoming more and more difficult and dangerous only because of the ill formulated materials getting widely circulated especially in our country since the regulators are ineffective as on today now this is the main problem which i am in talking about when when it doesn't get the performance what the paint manufacturer does increase the dosage sometimes it is told also to increase the dosage we are exactly talking about uh, exactly opposite do not use unwanted excessive quantities of biocide whatever you use excessive is going to come back to us in many many ways and in such a ways that you will not know so everything has to be limited within the performance spectra within that particular point of view as and how we want our economy to be excellent purpose is what our economy while choosing our economy we have to choose the social benefits so both of them have to be matched then only we can do the work otherwise it is going to be very very difficult remember water is going to be scarcity one major city in the world has already announced the pm the local corporations already announced that what they will not be in position to supply water to the residents over there this situation will not be very far in our country the third world war will be fought on wire water water everybody will start stopping the water going to other country or there will be war on the water because somebody gets more water somebody doesn't get water understand the situation is very bad and we cannot make it further by polluting the sources of water with the leach material from the paint industry from the paints this is the problem which we have been facing why do the wet state preservatives fail only two inefficiency and insufficiency i given the arrows insufficiency doses versus microbial load microbial load is too high but your dosage has remain same you have used some extenders something which is lying down for years microbial load has gone up your pen dosage is i mean uh, preservative dose is not sufficient or it got completely consumed who consumed it microbes or it got decomposed decomposed by internal action with the components of the paints but this hap- happened it can happen that it can also kill the microbes which are already existing so i written one sided it continues thereafter inefficiency a wrong recommendation error of choice contraindicatory something which is not compatible contraindicatory by side has been recommended limited activity range you do not know which microbes are going to sit together so you require the activity against the range of the microbes which you know so what you require is a material which has got having larger uh, activity range and by sides getting deteriorated in the storage 
now i as a fundamental question how do you choose your antimicrobials do not i i do hear the question do you have such and such a antimicrobial material so they state the composition so and so person do you have it if you have it i want it are but why you want that how do you decide that you wanted only that answer given is that i used that or somebody else recommended my consultant recommended it right nobody bothers about to know ki what exactly you require does it mean that it has to be well experts are supposed to be talking what you can decide upon we can give you choice we can find out what is what so demanding certain composition by percentage as heard from somebody next is by asking for the rate everybody in paint industry sorry if i say that don't feel offended but they feel that buy side is the only component where you should do the cost control how long suppose i offer you 20 rupees less when you are using 0.2% or 0.25% it cost 4 paisa per liter so for 4 paisa you are going to do a risk everybody you can't we can't no one can so how can the buyer side be a subject of a rate i still not understood this question at all i am not still understood why people talk about it there are empty number of things which you can talk about if you have to save four paisa you can create your efficiency of working reduce the rejection your rejection will give you 2% 0.2% 0.5% um, saving you don't have to do saving by cutting the cost of a buy side by doing paper comparison of the formulation especially they nowadays they compare sgs now you go all we are all technology story you know that everybody's formulation is going to be different can you say that i want a matching refractive index i want matching this i want matching that it's not possible at all so what are you comparing something which is not possible expressing need of conducting some trials is a big topic and by asking question what is new whenever i hear the question what is new with you i know that the person who wants to purchase is not interested in purchasing anything he just wants to ask the question right but this is a question which always tells me that okay it means the purchase is not a serious buyer at all right because if i give you he said it is new so i can't use it then i had to study it and study period is 4 years then why did you ask it but of course we can't ask it because we are supposed to be service providers to you time is running short so i am just uh, i'll just run to the very important topic microbial anti microbials derived from the nature it's a it's a burning topic today people keep on asking me questions that why not we introduce the anti microbials avail from the from the plant source which is called as natural source and these and that yes you can do it but just don't make a powder up something and do it and now for those who do not know the subject of bio pesticide has already come up and if you know the regulations on bio pesticide and what is being demanded on the bio pesticide it is far bigger than what is being demanded on the synthetic preservatives which are running as on today because everything is unknown and when everything is unknown a subject like preservatives subject like something which kills microbes cannot be exposed to the common people to the common man know where it can be done unfortunately under that same thing where do i lost that there was a beautiful announcement done by ispa in the march 2023 issue it says that 13 units in chatisgarh started manufacturing paints based on cow dung right and it was uh, reported to the local people that it's a fantastic indigenization of the paint industry 
well such thing existed 40 70 years back what are we talking about exactly and you call it as a indigenization and the government gives a recognition the certificate of the kind what not today what we are providing but similar kind of thing for for doing the paint from cow dung for what application nothing is known at least i request ispa should take care not to publish such things or if they publish something at least add the footnote has been given by the government and and i am really surprised that this this kind of thing happen anyway you and me will stand here and we'll do discuss about it further <laughs> so i come to the dry film preservative there is a complete absence of clear understanding on this subject is my conclusion even after working for 40 years in the field of antimicrobials unfortunately i keep on saying so because i cannot reach everywhere and people are getting actually loaded with the misconceptions who loads them mnc biosat companies for doing their business in my country it's a fact whether you want to accept it or not now i'll show you why i'm talking about this you know the, uh, what you require is bacterial growth uh, algal growth fungal growth and all those things and from there we start about it this is the topic which i already said regulatory people it was realized and patented about 40 years back 40 years back that a certain combination of certain materials gives a excellent performance of a dry film press when you dose them what was the combination the combination was not with respect to only technical actives but combination was with respect to percentage with respect to each other percentage with respect to each other and when you load such materials in a paint and when it is when that paint is applied when the film dries people in about 40 years back they found that it is performing good before that what they were using they were using nothing but the mercuries and other materials which were also giving performance but but now this but is important it was being claimed in those days without providing any kind of a data to any paint manufacturer anywhere globally it was claimed that these materials when they get loaded in the paint and when the film dries it remains uniformly present in the film no data available no proof available now what really happens you are seen on every wall when the growth occurs there are patches of algae there is patches of fungi it is never uniform all throughout so wherever there is a element which is acting as an anti fungal algae can grow fungi will uh, fungi will not grow wherever anti algal material is absent in the film algae will grow so you get the patches it clearly showed that there is no uniform presence no uniform distribution but this continued for almost up to year 2004 2005 when we first challenged that thing in germany saying that this is not true now what is not true i come over here i temporarily use this one or i think i am still audible right look at this particular thing there are three things over here These three things are remaining together in practically the same ratio as they were added, and they have been distributed. They are not being used as a subset. They are being distributed equally, so there is no no growth over it. Now look at it. What happens over it when they get scattered? When the film dries, this is a reset motion, completely absent over here. Fungicide portion absent over here. 
we will go. Now, this is what we get from here. It's very easy to say this. So, how to ensure that? So, it was Benzer who introduced poly encapsulation of three actives together in exactly the same proportion all throughout and only company till today from 2004 onwards till 2023 who has got all the three elements encapsulated together. All other biocide companies, all my MNC competitors have done it almost 14, 15 years back, 14, 14 15 years after us, but only for one, one single component and then loaded them again inside. There is a big difference. You are encapsulating one molecule, you are encapsulating another molecule separately and then you are adding together and we encapsulate three together and we are adding together. There is a big difference in performance. Right? But we never claimed anything which is wrong on it. By encapsulation, there is no change in the toxicity profile of any material. If it changes, then it has to be called as a separate new active ingredient. Nobody has done that. But look at the literatures and the things which get circulated to you. There are claims that it is encapsulated. Tox has the profile is reduced. How? How? Biocell industry is ridiculed, riddled by all such myths till today. The biggest myth comes hereafter. The biggest myth which is there is on leachability of biocides. There is active ingredients leaches out from the dry film, receiving mostly very high. So what really people kept on talking? They say that the surface get reactivated from the core by the ingredient of the biocide again. And for which, how many of you have heard the story or the theory of osmosis? Due to osmotic effect, algae side came out. Fungi side came out. Have you heard? Yes. Can you prove me, can you give me a data that why that osmotic effect chose only the active ingredient of biocide and not other pigment, not other paint? not of any other organic material. So it is having, so it is something which is ridiculous. The fact is, there is a leach out. The fact is, because of leach out, there is a depletion. Because there is a depletion, there are chances that microbial growth can occur. So solution is simple. What was the solution? Use excess biocide. Excess bias and excess leakage. We all are facing that issue today. The farmer is crying that he doesn't get water, he doesn't get rain, and we are making his land unfertile by allowed diuron to reach his water sources. I am a fish eater. We have got a huge tall buildings in Mumbai. Huge amount of diuron exists over there. Huge amount of diuron gets washed out. Huge amount of it reaches sea. I don't get fish. The entire marine life is getting disturbed. We are not bothered. How long? How long? Now, am I standing here only to criticize? No. We have done the work and we have taken patents and we have advocated near kind of things. But just few minutes back, I said that no new things can be introduced for 15 years. Why? Because you require tox data, you require the data of the, all the mutagenicity, carcinogenicity, teratogenicity and all that thing studied over 14, 15, 15 years with respect to the dosage, with respect to climate, with respect to the compositions, with respect to uh, weathering conditions, this, that, everything all together. If that is the case, introduction upon your ingredient in the biocide, in the antimicrobials is impossible. So we decided to work within our own sphere of what is known and whether we could solve this problem. Now that is the story which I am going to present to you Tom. So that I don't take too much time. But before that I want to come to this. 
this is again a very important picture. Possibly you are aware you might be getting some such a test reports from people. Now this is a clear, this is a paint film. This is anti-formal test paint of microbiology. You can see there is nothing grown over here, nothing grown over here. Paint film is in that. People call this thing as inhibition zone. Inhibition zone. And unfortunately, if you open a stem 5589, even that talks about inhibition zone because it talked somewhere in the year 1998. No updated till today. And people show that I got a big inhibition zone so that your paint film will not get affected. Are, what is what are inhibition? We are talking only about the paint film. We are not inhibiting anybody to grow from anywhere. But look at it. This is my preservative. This is my paint film. Paint, paint is yours. Containing my dragon preservative. There is a fungal growth of now. Nothing has occurred on the top of paint. I am not disturbed environment. I am not disturbed environment at all. I not touch what exists around me. I don't say you are inhibited, don't come into my zone. No. You exist. Don't affect my paint. Same is the case. This is algae. This is algae. And when you know when you use excess dye on, because you want to give guarantee for 10 years, 15 years, 15 years for the paint. All dye on which is out. No algae can grow. You are happy that you have given 15 years guarantee. You have spoiled my country. Why should I accept it? This is the problem which I have been facing. This is the problem which you have been facing. Not that you are criminals, not that you are making mistakes. You have no alternative because you are not being told what is to be done. So we did the work. The work now, this is one of the works. We have got some, several such works, but this, this became very famous. It was introduced in the year 2017. We worked for almost so many years. And it was it, we got the global patent. Patent is there in 157 countries today, including the patent in China. Most of our patents, we have taken the patents also in China. So I don't want Chinese to duplicate my material without my doing. We are very, very strict about it, right? So what we use? We use a solid state chemistry. Now what is solid state chemistry? Any solid crystal when you take it and when you look at its crystallography, you will find there is a defect. This is a nature's mystery. There is a defect. So there is no uniformity. And people realize this thing much, much earlier. I studied the subject of solid state chemistry from one of the leading professors of those days in the year 1968-69, so many years back, right? And this solid state chemistry is exactly what today you are holding your mobile phones. A small crystal giving multiple, multiple kind of a usage applications, right? What they use? They use the blank spaces in the crystal. And in the blank spaces of crystal, certain functionality can be introduced. We scanned such crystals. And then we decided that I don't want that crystal again to be migrating with heavy rains. Mumbai, if it starts raining, it rains tons of water. So let the crystal not get washed out. So we want a very big crystal. So what we created is a polymeric crystal. With a polymeric crystal with many multiple voids. And in the voids of those, we introduced a known technical grade active ingredient which is already well recognized by all regulators across the world. This is the picture of that. You can see several whites. Several whites. In these whites, we introduced known technical grade materials. Five minutes. Right? Your question I could hear. Only five minutes. Right? So we introduced the technical grade active ingredients. We found that it is giving a different properties. 
some of them are giving anti algal properties some of them are giving anti fungal properties the degree of properties kept on varying not that uniformly all of them gave similar thing because we must have skin something like about 50 60 70 80 i don't know how many the team kept on working and we screened all those crystals and we introduced it and from those we chose one material as a anti algal component which can be you converted into a dry film preservative to prevent algal growth on paint film that particular material is known as a microcheck mzrkb it is now you, you all know that how much diron we are using in the paint i don't have to talk about it you are it is excessive and only when you give that excessive you can give those guarantees of 15 years and 10 years of paint performance cib doesn't allow or cib is not in favor of use of such excessive diron everybody is afraid of it so if tomorrow one regulations comes out paint industry will have to look at it that how long i can give 10 years guarantee you can't but this particular material which we introduce it is not required beyond 0.5% as total dose and it gives a performance which can be equivalent to 10 to 15 years of dosage uh, up a paint performance we have taken global patent on it and then accordingly we have created a, another new concept the concept is synergy systems of antimicrobials if the microbes can show a, some kind of a synergy to make 2 3 4 5 10 100 billions of microbes sit together why can't we create a synergy by bringing two or three materials together to repel them out isn't it so we did exactly the same thing so the new concept of synergy systems of preservative has come when you use that system your total dose of biocide doesn't exceed 1.1% for the best performing paint against today's prevalence of 2.5 2.5 3 4% which all are aware right now my last question before i end what are you going to use in next 10 to 15 years has anybody talked to you the world is going to change many of the active ingredients which are being used today let us forget about this i don't want to look at it right there are so many several things there after but i am going to stop early right the world is changing lot of new i mean in a lot of ingredients which are already being used today will not be permitted to be used here after because of newer and newer talks that are coming out newer and newer ngos are coming forward you all heard the case of johnson and johnson talk talk only four four women were smart to realize that their cancer is due to the talks ovarian cancer and breast cancer both and that spreaded all throughout Johnson and Johnson had been giving the talc based baby powder also for several years for several several decades what really happened this is exactly the case i said the impurity profile of the material what was the impurity in that talc asbestos a known carcinogen and here we are giving biocides without talking about impurity profile of the material and we are talking only about the active ingredient is so and so it cannot happen here after so what are you going to use in next 10 15 years i cannot even think what i can use in 25 years because the entire scenario will be change we have started already working on it that what could be possible for which what we require is huge expenditure on toxicology which we have been doing toxicology experiment is difficult because animal killing is not permitted so you require a lot of 
permissions but this is required this is required uh, we have identified a few materials which will run for the next 10 years which will give you the performance let there be any change in the paint industry i worked on paints several years back quite rightly so i know what the paints are although i don't consider myself as a paint technologist anymore i forgot in that topic long back long 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 years back right but even after looking at it we realized what could be done and only those materials we are giving all of you are most welcome to ask us any time we are always here always there the team will be always there to give the support to give the answers we have got a full fledged microbiology lab already existing in navi mumbai where every day we receive several samples of the paints and many other materials also because we are not just only in the paint as a our profile in fact we are the only company globally who is attending to each and every section wherever biocide is essential so microbiology lab will be always giving you the support uh, all those programs are completely time bound the time your materials reaches us for testing till the time we give you report when we receive the material we will give you a date on which you will receive the material uh, report to that level we are geared up our end, uh, factories in kurkum we have got another factory which is under fda fda for the biocides because a lot of materials go for the food contact application directly indirect indirectly also for the cosmetics so we require all of them so all those things are there fda facility is also there entire building is nothing but the laboratories and then the production units so most welcome to ask me whatever you require i am not expert i don't know anything is my always a background so whatever question i cannot answer today i'll be answering you tomorrow that is definite with this talk kahan se from the same talk see minds when you go deeper and pardon me no it was not from 20 microns is there it was not from 20 microns <coughs> now this is a typical example that a very simple looking material causing problem i am making only awareness on it all of us if we are not aware today we are not going to pass something to the next generation that is the problem which are see departments are there but police departments are not there in our country also the cib exists but cib doesn't have police to find out who does what the responsibility is ours in our i include all of you thank you very much any question thank you sir for your thought provoking presentation uh, now i only will be asking the questions now my uh, first question is name any one antimicrobial preservative that can disrupt endocrine system of human body yeah yeah correct i request dr pathare sir to please present the gift to him uh give any two uh, reasons that a paint can get spoiled while still in a uh, seal container already there diana yeah correct
थैंक यू सर नेक्स्ट फॉर फेलिसिटेशन आई रिक्वेस्ट दिपन्ना सर टू प्लीज फेलिसिटेट डॉक्टर फतारे सर विद बुके एंड मोमेंटो Moving forward, may I please request the panna sir to introduce our next speaker. Thank you, Dr. Patel sir, for your nice presentation on the ethical biocides. Ethical biocides, and you will explain the differentiate between the antimicrobial and the biocides. Now, the next speaker <coughs> is uh, Mr. Swar Ravishya. He holds a B.Tech degree in polymer engineering from the ICT. in the year 2015 after his graduation he uh, pursued ms in polymer and coating technology from eastern michigan university usa and was awarded the emu success uh, success scholarship based on his academic excellence the graduate research assistant under the mentorship of dr vijay manari swar optimized and developed a super hydrophobic coating via a sol gel approach he also uh, Leiden Industry uh, sponsor project with the major automotive parts manufacturing in Michigan. In investigating the investigating the root cause of the visual effect in a spray coating PC ABS plastic parts and also presented his finding in the Detroit Focus Automatic Coatings Conference in 2017. Soar has interned with the multinational resin manufacturing company like Arkema Chemicals India and. Alinex Resins USA in powder coating in the R&D and technical service teams. Swar has been past president of Polymers and Coating Advanced uh, Advanced Materials Club from 2016-17 in his graduate school and represented his university at the various conferences across USA such as American Coating So and Red Tech. After completion of his master, Swar worked in the industry as a UV. formulations chemist in r&d at jeller uh, gamlin corporation usa a german printing ink manufacturing company swar so specialized in product development of uv and led flexo inks and coating servicing uh, the printing packaging and coating industries he currently worked in nr colors limited as a director of technology after gaining vast experience in various segment of specialty chem uh, chemicals industry both in india and usa sir please <clears throat> so before we begin i would like to request uh, dr harish agrawal sir to please felicitate aj singh sir with the book and the moment <coughs> thank you sir Thank you, sir. Okay. I would like to thank sir for that elaborate introduction. Uh, I see we are already a little late on our uh, schedule, so I will uh, go through my uh, presentation. Uh, I have a very simple introduction for myself. My name is. Uh, swar and uh, I, i after 8 years i am back home so i completed my btech from ict in 2015 so it feels great uh, to be back home yeah so uh, my topic for today is importance of pigment dispersion in the paint and coating industry uh, these are some of the uh, slides that i have in my uh, topic so i'm going to be introducing first what are pigment dispersions what are some of the steps that are involved in making them why do we need to use it in our paint and coating formulations what are some of the defects that we get when the pigment is not dispersed well uh, i'm going to be introducing some products offered by nr uh, and 
going to be talking about environmentally friendly or low VOC pigment dispersion. So uh, we have all heard about this term before. Uh, pigment dispersions are uh, are basically solid pigment and extenders in our paint formulation. These solid particles need to be dispersed and stabilized in our paint film. So dispersions usually have a high concentration of pigment load in it. Uh, and this high concentration is uh, responsible for imparting various properties in the paints like color, durability, etc. So the, and there are a lot of terms for pigment dispersion in the industry. Uh, in the small scale area, people refer to them as stainers. Uh, but uh, there are other terms also like pigment paste, pigment concentrates. I was at the ECS two weeks ago at the European Coating Show and they came up with a good marketing term. They're calling it pigment preparations now. So the terms keep on changing, but the uh, formulation is the same. So there are three steps involved in a pigment dispersion process. First is uh, wetting, second is grinding, and third is called as stabilization. So wetting is the first step that occurs in the pigment dispersion uh, process. It takes place when the dry pigment powder is added into your liquid paint film. Uh, Deagglomeration is the, is the next step that uh, takes place. Another word for this is called as grinding. It's the step that requires the maximum energy in your paint manufacturing process. The last step, but not the least, is called as stabilization. Once the desired particle size is reached, it is very important that these deagglomerated pigment particles sh should be stable. We don't want them to be agglomerated again. So wetting is the first step that takes place. When solid pigment particles are added into the liquid paint film, they are uh, agglomerated in uh, nature. The air and moisture is entrapped on the surface of the pigment and needs to be replaced or driven off so to make this happen, the liquid needs to wet the particle. Uh, poor wetting can have defects like lower pigment solids, your mill base viscosity will be higher and your dispersion will not be that efficient. So it's basically all a game of surface tension. Basically the surface tension of the pigment particle should be uh, the surface tension of the pigment uh, particle is there, then there is a surface tension of the uh, liquid film. The, so the surface tension of the liquid film should be lower than the surface tension of the pigment particle. That's why it's always easier to get a, a good mix when you are using uh, solvents like xylene and butyl acetate because the surface tensions of those is around 25 to 30 whereas it's very tough to wet uh, aqueous uh, systems because surface tension of water is around 72. The next step is the grinding or the deagglomeration stage. Once complete wetting of the pigment particle is achieved, these large agglomerates must be broken down. This is achieved through a mechanical process called as grinding. Uh, there is strong cohesive forces between the pigment particles uh, and a lot of energy is uh, needed to break these cohesive forces. So to uh, do that, uh, we have mills, we have high speed stirrers, the HSDs. Uh, the, but the HSDs and the high speed stirrers can only reduce the particle size up to a certain point. We hear this problem in the industry a lot like, sir, itne time ke liye 
स्टरिंग चालू है मिक्सिंग चालू है लेकिन ग्राइंड नहीं आ रहा है सो वी हैव टू गो बैक टू द बेजिक्स इट्स वॉट वी लर्न इन द लैब्स ओवर योर दैट यू हैव टू गेट अ गुड वॉटेक्स इन योर पेंट फिल्म देर शुड बी अ डोनट शेप विच यू सी वेन यू आर डूइंग योर ग्राइंडिंग इन द एच एस डी and these are uh, some of the things that you have to take care of the, your diameter of the uh, disc uh, and the diameter of the tank they have a relation uh, to each other and also the distance from uh, the bottom of the tank and the diameter of the disc so these are some of the calculations that you have to take care of otherwise you will only be using so much of energy electricity but you won't achieve a good grind gauge for it another way of grinding is called as impact so what happens in this is you make the use of uh, beads you may you pass your mill base through a bead mill for example so the type of bead that you choose the size of the bead the volume of the bead these all are important factors in achieving a good grind so the best properties of the pigment dispersion is obtained when the particle size is reduced to the primary particle size the last step is called as stabilization if the pigments are not stabilized well they have a tendency to form agglomerates again so there are two types of stabilizations that can uh, take place one is called as charge stabilization this usually takes place in a polar uh, system uh, so uh, when the wetting and dispersing agent is added it induces a charge so like repels like hence the pigment particles don't come close to each other and the second type of uh, stabilization is called the steric hindrance so basically what happens is the polymeric uh, dispersant has a head and a tail the head attaches itself onto the pigment surface and the long chain tail that is uh, uh, hanging around in your paint film that prevents the pigment particle from coming close to each other so uh now we will go over some of the factors that affect uh pigment dispersions so the chemical constitution is very important we have seen in the previous uh, presentations today the surface area of the pigment is important the type you are using an on uh, organic one or a inorganic one uh, the type of uh, binder it's tg it's wetting and dispersing properties and the uh, and their interactions so and then there is a type and amount of uh, dispersing additive one of the most important point uh, which is an important factor is called your mill base formulation it's very important that you take a lot of care and take some effort in formulating your mill base well then the next point is the type and mode of operation of the dispersing equipment for example ball mills bead mills attriters sand mill etc pigment binder concentration the viscosity of your base the temperature and also how much time do you want to do the pigment dispersion process for so this is the photo of the donut shaped uh, uh, effect that i was uh, talking about in the earlier slide so what would be called as a good mill base a good mill base will be formulated when it has the highest pigment loading the rheology profile will be absolutely right for example i was always under the impression that a good mill base will have lower uh, 
viscosity, but that was actually not true. Uh, when I was working on a TRM or a triple roll mill, that time the uh, uh, you need to get a good flow on it. TAC is also a very important factor in that. So uh, you can formulate your uh, mill base by doing a simple test called as the Daniel flow point basically what you do is you take your fixed uh, gram of uh, pigment and you add various concentration of uh, resin inside it and you see at what point are you seeing that the uh, the mass is flowing off your spoon so you get a daniel wet point and your daniel f f flow point so these two are important things uh, a uh, right mill base will be the one which has the shortest dispersion time. It consumes the lowest amount of uh, energy and it, there is least equipment wear and tear. Because these grinding medias, uh, they are not cheap. Uh, they cost a lot. So, and the highest uh, energy uh, when you manufacture paint is the uh, pigment dispersion process. So these are some of the QC tests that you can do uh, for your pigment uh, dispersions. You, you can always check after, uh, you can always check what the grind is. The industry standard as we all know is a 7 plus. You can check the viscosity using a B4 cup or a stormer. Uh, you, but the, one of the most important things is the color uniformity. You have to ensure that from batch to batch, your pigment, uh, color strength, delta E opacity, all these uh, properties are the same. So there cannot be any variation in shade from batch to batch. Then you do a simple flocculation test, then you can check, uh, you, uh, you can do a storage stability test, you can keep your paste inside the uh, oven for some, for a few weeks and check how, what the change in the rheology is. And you can also do your basic uh, physical property test like solid uh, particle size, etc. So what would you call uh, an efficient pigment uh, dispersion? I would say something which has high, high gloss, high opacity, the high tinting strength, uh, the shade should be uh, consistent from batch to batch and there should be no defects in your final paint film. Whereas if your pigment dispersion process is not uh, efficient, then you get poor gloss, your opacity is lower, tinting stem keeps on changing, the shade keeps on changing. When you add the pigment paste to your final base paint, the viscosity, there's a big change. So you have to ensure all these things are well taken care of. These are some of the defects that occur uh, uh, in a paint film. Flocculation, as we all know, it's a re-agglomeration of the pigment particles due to poor stabilization in the paint film. And it's, there's a very easy test to check this out. You can take a drawdown and just rub the top part with your uh, fingers and see the difference in the shade between the rubbed part and the unrubbed part. So if there is a, as you can see in the slide, that's a blue one is not uh, properly stabilized. Another type of uh, defect, there are more uh, defects uh, that take place in a paint film. Most coating Formulations have more than one uh, pigment in them. Usually it's a TiO2 white base and any uh, uh, combination of any other uh, pigment with it. 
so they should be vetted and uh, deflocculated well uh, the terms f uh, floating and f flooding are the two types of uh, defects that occur at the surface of your uh, paint film it's easy it's very easy to uh, find this out you can just do a rub out a uh, test again and see if uh, you can see that the TiO2 is on one side and your, for example, your blue and your red is on the uh, other side. So uh, floating is also a type of defect that occurs on the surface of the paint film. Uh, you can, uh, the pigment separation occurs in the form of hexagonal cell called as Bernard cells. Now, why should we use pigment dispersions? So being uh, liquid in nature, we know that it is very easy to handle it compared to using a dry pigment uh, powder. We have all seen the paint manufacturing uh, uh, units, especially in the small scale and the medium scale, the pigment is lying all over the floor. So this is one of the uh, advantages for that the handling is easier the pigment loading is higher so uh, uh, you can save on cost of grinding of the expensive high performance pigments at your end and uh, apart from that optimum dispersion leads to maximum brilliance and high tinting strength so as we have spoken about all these uh, properties in the previous slides, we need to achieve a right optimum of matrix of all these uh, properties like gloss, opacity, tinting strength, storage, st stability, rheology of your paint. So that's why you need a reliable pigment dispersion manufacturer. Now, one very interesting topic, are pigment dispersions environmentally uh, friendly? So the simple answer would be yes and no. Uh, if your VOC is lower than yes, they are environmentally uh, more uh, compliant. So during my time in the States, I came across this one uh, sentence very often, regulation drives innovation uh, it's not always true but once you get there is a regulatory force then all the R&D teams and the innovation teams and all the major paint uh, MNCs they are working on reducing the VOC of the paint lately they are using bio base uh, uh, resins also for example soya based uh, uh, Raisins are used as wetting and uh, are used to make some uh, pigment dispersions uh, in Europe now. So, uh, yeah, uh, there we, we also see in, uh, in uh, India now that all the major construction projects are all being green building certified. So it is a push for all the paint manufacturing uh, units to use environmentally friendly raw uh, RMs to make their paint. No, I was told that this is a te technical and educational uh, uh, seminar, so I won't be spending much time on what products I have to offer. It was the main focus was how are pigment dispersions made, what is a mill base, what are some of the tips to uh, formulate it, what are some of the defects that you get in the paint film. But yeah, these are uh, universal uh, stainers, usually used uh, in 50 ml, 100 ml, 200 ml pack size, mainly for a DIY approach or do it yourself. You want to paint your house, you call a painter, he gets a 20 liter base paint uh, uh, to your home. He adds uh, a small bottle of uh, stainer 
uh, mix this the shade on the cap and then ask you is this shade okay you say no then he takes the stainer more adds more and that's how you match the shades but nowadays when you go to any uh, paint shop these are just the tds and the shade card nowadays what happens you go to a, a paint shop and they give you a 1000 shade uh, fan deck so this is the uh, trend now uh, everyone is slowly moving towards point of sh uh, sale uh, universal uh, tinters so this is the 2100 series that we offer for that uh, this is the TDS along with all the information weight per liter uh, the 4500 series is, is the water base pigment paste for your in-plant and factory tinting applications uh, these are basically concentrated paste uh, this is the TDS I've written how what is the pigment powder being used and what is the concentration this is a basic shade card it are there they are also very useful in making a uh, colored uh, bases apart from that this is the last series that is a 6600 coat tint series these are used to make uh, uh, in usually used in solvent base or industrial uh, coating applications it's one paste for all so it's a uh, Compatible with your alkyd, epoxy, and PU. This is a TDS along with some information in it, the shade card. So yeah, there's some brief about uh, NR. We have three manufacturing uh, units, uh, sophisticated Disposing equipments, R&D lab, shade, shade formulation lab. Yep, that should be all. Thank you so much. Question, please. The small to video that I it just have. means something that adds color to their home or protects the surfaces they care for. But at NR Colors. We see paint differently. To us, paint is technology. Anna Colors Limited is an emerging manufacturer of organic and inorganic pigment dispersions and a leading superstore of raw materials for the surface coating industry. With three manufacturing units situated near Bhivandi, Maharashtra, NR Colors manufactures a wide range of high-performance dispersions for architectural, decorative and industrial coatings applications. Our ISO certified, state-of-the-art infrastructure consists of the latest manufacturing technology at Bath with global standards. At our advanced testing labs, we monitor the quality of product at every stage from raw materials to packaging. High speed. Automatic packing lines minimize human error and ensure consistency in delivery. Leveraging our native leadership in distribution, we ensure uninterrupted supply of product and our offerings. Realizing the need of the industry for a fine particle size in liquid coatings, we started manufacturing mock PIO2 D90 less than 2 microns in particle size. We have addressed the need of the customer. The product is made in India, international standards and at Indian price. Give us the opportunity to serve you and you will see the difference.
Since 1990, Anna Colors has been a leading distributor for the surface coating industry and is the largest independent chemical distributor in India. We are proud to represent some of the best recognized international brands in India. With a wide portfolio of products, we serve customers in diverse industries like architectural coatings, automotive coatings, coil coatings, powder coating, flooring, pigment dispersions, plastic master batches, and many more. A nationwide footprint is the backbone of the business, and we have a pan India presence that is managed at our head office in Mumbai. We have the capability to ship products within 48 hours of receiving the order, reducing customer wait times and increasing their efficiency. As an intensely customer-centric company, we focus on service and additionally provide technical support and services and help them meet their needs effectively. Leadership is born of excellence and we at NR Colors promise to carry our legacy of excellence into the future. Thank you for the insightful uh, presentation, sir. You now may take your seat. Momentum. Okay. So I request you, uh, Tipana, sir, to felicitate. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Moving forward, may I please uh, request Tipanna sir to introduce our next speaker. Okay, uh, our next speaker is uh, Satya Prakash from Tipcoin. Huh? Tea break. Okay.
हाँ आगे तो आई मीन इजी पढ़ना इजी होगा Also display here. Laptop. But either आता है कि नहीं? यहाँ पे भी आता है लेकिन यहाँ पे नहीं है शायद। यहाँ पे वो नहीं है। यहाँ कभी-कभी ऐसे सामने भी रहता है ना? अच्छा। तो यहाँ पे नहीं है।
uh, welcome back to all the dignitaries i would uh, request dr bijoy bijoy bijaya k mishra then uh, professor dr rn jagtap sir ritesh sharma and dr prashant sir to come on the dais Yes, sir. Doctor uh, Ritesh Sharma. Medical mic. Yeah, sir. What is? Ha ha. Color mic. Color mic. Color mic. Now, now I would request uh, Mr. Satya Prakash, sir, to continue with his presentation. I would, I would request a Professor Dr. R. N. Jagtap, sir, to introduce the speaker. Yeah, hello. Good evening to all of you. I'm Professor Jagtap. I'm going to be the session chairman. But uh, this was, you know, all of a sudden they have asked me to become a session chairman. Therefore, it is my pleasant duty to introduce myself to you. Okay, so that you will know who is the you know, session chairman. So I'm Professor Jagtap. I did my BSc take, MSc take, and PhD take. Through, uh, throughout the technical education in this institute, for a brief period of time, I worked in the industry and then I was fortunate to come back here as a faculty. And I have more than about 30 years of experience. I worked in different areas. I have five patents, almost about 150 international papers. And I have guided about 15 PhD students, more than 100 MTech uh, students, right? With this experience, I'm trying to, you know, conduct this session. I hope you will enjoy that, right? So uh, today we are having, for this session, we are, we are having, you know, three people who are there. So the first one, the very fresh, you know, introduction, which I got it from Satya Prakash. I'm reading it for you. So uh, Mr. G. Satya Prakash, he's the sales head of TIPCO. He's having more than 20 years of experience in the technical uh, sales across India. And for more than 10 years, he's associated with the paint industry. And he is helping uh, the people in, uh, you know, taking the best possible processes. And he uh, provides the turnkey solutions also. Without delay of time, I hand over this mic to Mr. Prakash. Thank also. you, sir. Uh, a very good evening to you all, sir. It's a, I'm a small session after a tea break. So uh, from the morning onwards, we have a very good sessions on various uh, raw materials, basically what type of materials, pigments, additives, what are all used in the process industry of a paint manufacturing. So from there, I just go into how you make the paint. 
So today I am just covering on the topic of water based paints. Uh, we of course we do a lot of uh, we give our machinery to a lot of paint industries but today I limit my topic to the water based paints. Uh, I, I brief about a TIPCO introduction, what we are, what TIPCO is into, and uh, water-based paint plant advantages, overview of water-based paints, and what are our TIPCO products for the water-based paint and its water-based industry, and a small uh, review on the water-based plant and its turnkey solutions, and why TIPCO and what we can offer as a one-stop solution. Uh, Sir TIPCO, we established in 1985 as it's almost now 35 years old company. We are the leading manufacturers of paint machinery and uh, in paint machinery we offer HSDs, bead mills, mixers, basket mills and whatever all related to the paint industry we manufacture. Other than that, we also give a turnkey solutions. And we have products related to mixing, milling, grinding, homogenization and other equipments. We are strongly determined to be the one of the best manufacturing in the Indian industry. Today, today we have uh, good infrastructure in our factory like we also have CNC machines, VMC machines, laser cutting. So that is way required to get a better product. Even if you want to compete with MNC standards, the machine quality should be much better than what we manufacture. Today we almost adopt all the international quality standards for checking the raw material, finish, and even the grit, whatever, how much of grit is maintained, what is the shaft stability, machine stability, everything we do. Uh, this is our infrastructure where we have around six CNC machines, we have laser cutting machines. So today we ensure that if you are making whatever 50 products or 60 products, everyone is of same quality. You also have a laboratory setup where you can come, uh, come to our factory and test your uh, uh, samples of one to five liters. We have in-house engineering design team. If some if something come up of a new design before it is getting, getting into production, we ourselves make into the design. Then we thoroughly analysis, then we come into the production. We developed a new products like homogenization, which is into high shear homogenizers, liquid powder mixers, in-tank homogenizers. This is a new technology which is adapted in the Western. So we thought it is having a several advantages in the process industry. So we started developing these machines from last two to three years. We ourselves, after focusing, we also observed new designs, what are better for the industry. And we have service setup at our office, uh, Delhi at Sonipat, and Pune also we have an office. And we are expanding further at our Sonipat factory. We are almost doubling our capacity of the fac existing factory. These are our few clients across uh, thing. Like we have a very M good MNC clients like Normet, Tribon, Sabu Coating, Sirka, Uplex. These are the weather well known Indian brands. Few more customers, and these are the few already projects we have done from last uh, last one year. These are the few we have done for Sirka. And these are total turnkey projects. I say starting from raw material to the finished products. What exactly we cover in the TIPCO? We cover paint from water as well as solvent based. We also offer for resin solutions, personal care and cosmetics, 
we also have machinery for decorative coatings, industrial coatings, ink, printing inks, packaging inks, construction chemicals, pharmaceuticals, nanotechnology, specialty chemicals, pigments and adhesives, agrochemical industry. Other than that, we are very specialized into total turnkey solutions. So I straight away, I confine my topic into water-based paint plants. Why suddenly the water-based paints? No way, today everywhere, uh, most of the industries, almost 60 to 70 percent is running on solvent-based. So now today there is a lot of shift to the water-based water -based paints. But what is the advantage and disadvantage? So if you see really the solvent-based, it is really affecting the environment. That is where people are shifting it to, to solvent rather than to the water-based industries. Historically, solvent-based have no outperformed out water. That is where solvent making is also easy. But it is having its own disadvantage because solvent is a very uh, a flammable product. So that is also one uh, thing. And water is no, you don't need, it's a simple water. You don't need to have fire, fire related uh, safety equipment. So it saves ma majority of your cost on the, on the safety side. So that is where the water based uh, plants are getting more an advantage and advantage. Further to, t further to that, no, there are government regulations are also coming up where if you have a solvent base, a lot of uh, safety norms has to be done. Even you have to take care of the uh, waste usage, VOC, polymers. So there are a lot of safety uh, issues are there. Even if you go into, you cannot just like uh, the wastage of the solvent cannot be just can't dump into the outside. You have to be, it has to be treated well. So there is a lot of change in the government regulations also. That is where the industry is also shifting slightly towards the water-based industries. Coming to water-based industries, what, uh, what, what exactly it is? See, one thing if you go to solvent, if, you, they, if there is no properly maintained, the minute you enter into a solvent-based industry, you see the smell coming up. If it is really not meant, the odor is very, it is very uncomfortable. Even working, labor working there, it's very, it's very harmful. So and the VOC, VOC of whatever the volatile uh, exposures it is also not good. So, where coming to water, there are no such issues. You can handle it easily, even hazardous waste can be avoided, cleaning can be avoided. So there is a lot of advantages over solvent compared to solvent water-based industries. What is also good for water-based industry? Cleanup is very quick, whereas solvent is very difficult. You don't need to use additives, hardness and thinness as required in solvent-based. They have excellent adhesion. They have better color retention than solvent-based. There's a few advantages you have with the water-based paints. And to water-based industry, typically we offer design and engineering as a turnkey solution. We are starting from your raw material to the final finished product. We are capable of designing the whole plant, design, engineering, as well as we offer the equipments like whatever the TSDs, like dispersers, mixers, wash tank, bead mills, everything is from in-house of Tipco factory. We manufacture those equipments. And even we are capable of may, giving a plant piping design and execution with pumps, walls, whatever necessary is. Starting from your raw material, whatever is a pumping, additives, <coughs> storage, everything we are capable of giving a total plant design. Coming to the electricals, instrumentation, automation, SCADA. Today the people are moving to a lot of automation to reduce the labor. So we are capable of uh, giving a solution into automation and SCADA. Again, when coming into Water-based solutions, powder conveying system is very, very important. So we offer powder conveying system. Of course, it's an outsourced, but uh, we can uh, design various ways uh, how the powder can be con uh, powder can be conveyed very efficiently. Again, final thing uh, coming into the filling and packaging solutions. Yes, we offer the filling and packaging solutions to the to the fi final finished goods. Uh, if you look at really the process of water base, this is a basic flow chart. I will not go much deeper, but uh, basically com compared to solvent or paint, every industry is the same. First is a mixing, where you add a lot of water. Instead of solvent, here it is a water. Then titanium oxide, tail, deformer, calcium carbonate, silica, and other raw materials, water, as per your formula, formulation, whatever it is. Then comes to grinding. So here, various type of grinding equipment. Then coming to the finishing equipment, then filtration, whatever. Then final coming to the packaging and storage. This is a basic flow chart of a water-based paint industry. 
this is a typical uh, water based plant where what are the areas you have in the water main is the main production area then you have raw material area then uh, powder conveying system the other area is utility pumps and valves liquid pipe liquid piping system design finished goods area filling and packaging automation and scale if you cover all these areas more or less you built your plant so this is the areas whenever we design a plant we have we will ensure this uh, these areas are properly focused this properly demarcated and then we coming to the front this is one of the design we have given lively to one of the factory very compact where you can see all the tsds mixers and each bead mill storage system everything is incorporated in a properly in a g plus 2 design like in the top floor you have all the storage systems uh, here you have all the additives and everything storage system here you have the tsds with the top on that you have a powder conveying hoppers from the bottom by gravity these are filling into the mixers then from the bottom you have bead mills and the bottom there is a lot of area vacant where you can use for your packaging filling and finished goods area okay so first the main part of a paint comes with the effective mixing unless until mixing is not proper i mean you uh, the it starts from there so here the main equipment used in the mixing is the tsds that is uh, dispersers here these this is the major mixing happens here we we will make the mill base in these uh, tsds generally we offer a coaxial shaft designs with uh, two shafts one will be for the cowl blade the other will be a scrapper we ensure that whatever the tsd we manufacture it gives a proper vortex proper vortex is the main thing to form a proper mixing mill base so today we build one of the best vortex designs in tsds and this we can offer on load cell basis ba basing on your capacity whatever no just totally automated by scada so basing on uh, everything is incorporated into scada so basing on your whatever the uh, formulation or whatever the design you are according to the material is dropped into the tsds then mounting structure as well as if you don't want automation we have uh, tsds with uh, leg on based on legs all internals are with ss304 and uh, are also jacketed with ms for special application we give with a limpet coil design for cooling arrangement and our bearing designs are so specially designed no whenever you are adding lot of powder into the tsd it just tries to come up so these dust will settle under your bearings which is very very dangerous in your long run once these powder settles at your uh, bottom of the bearings no the uh, bearing life goes down this is where you have a very frequent failure so we are specially designed our bearings so that the dust will not go into these bearing areas these are the various designs of tsds we offer uh, the major part of the uh, tsd plant we have a capacities from 1 kl to 10 kl design the major power consumption goes here only where the shafts will go up to almost 250 250 hp of power should be efficiently designed as major mixing happens here so whenever we design whatever the uh, proper design ratios even uh, in nr colors you have see the, the l by d ratio the proper diameter Uh, blades ratio properly to be made so that you will get a perfect vortex. Uh, bearings are also specially designed so that uh, it have a very sturdy housing structure. So whenever you operate, the efficiency will be very good. No noise, very efficiently, smoothly run. And both we offer in both manual and load cell design. So this is one of the just I have a graphical view of, I have shown you here, where in the top you can have the TSD mixers. for every tsd generally you have two two mixers because the mill base is prepared in tsd after that the after emulsification it is coming to mixers because now whenever you have a tsd it runs for a batch time of 1 to 1 and a half hour after the once the mill base is ready it is let down into the mixers so one is a standby if something is running or your even uh, your package uh, packaging is not ready still your uh, material is lying at the mixer so other mixer you can use it so like that we have a two standby designs for every tsd two mixers are designed this is one of the efficient way of using a space utilization in your factory by going a vertical model and you can also ensure that no it uses a gravity like no on the top the gravity even though if you, you have a pump for this but the 
because of gravity, the, you can reduce your frictional forces. So at least you can reduce your power consumption taken by the pumps. After that, these are mixers where your mill base is uh, let down into these mixers. So this mill base is transferred. After that, here you add a lot of additives, emulsions or whatever your formulation as per that. Final product is done in the mixers, designed on the load cell for accurate loading, uh, loading applications, mounted, mounted on structure as well as ground mounted. And these are totally maintained in SS304, generally runs at a very low speed of 80 to 110 RPM. These are the various types of uh, mixes. There are plants, no, you, you don't need to have TSDs and uh, mixes. Then we have a normal uh, high speed dispersers with 1 HP, 2, 10, 20, 30 HP. So these are ground mounted high speed dispersers. Here after the, your whatever TSDs and mixes, there is a powder conveying system. Here I am showing two types of powder conveying system. One is a single line where you no know, every powder can be alternatively if you have six to seven powders the powders will be conveyed automatically to the tsds there are some applications where you no know, these powders are uh, cross contamination happens then we have an application where for each powder line there are different pipelines can be designed one hopper but different pipelines so that you can avoid cross contamination so we can view both the designs of powder, powder conveying systems so I will not go much deep into the powder conveyor system, but we can offer the solutions whatever the way you want. And coming to the high speed dispersers, we have a wide range of blades. Basing on the application, we can use different types of uh, mixing blades uh, like butterfly, multi shaft, triple shaft, anchor, whatever the design or whatever the application suits for. These are the various uh, designs of high speed dispersers we have. Like you can see, there are double shaft, there is a lead, there is a vacuum application. If we can't, if we, we can hold the tankers. So where there are various designs we offer in the high speed dispersers. Then coming to the new technology, what uh, we come up with, you know, uh, coming with having an effect to dispersion of the powders, we come with homogenizers. This homogenizer basically runs on a concept of rotor stator design process where it has one rotor. You can see the basic design here comes like this. Like in the last part, this one, that this is a rotor and this is a stator. This is an inline type of homogenizer where if you have a powder dropped into this, it will suck from the bottom and have a recirculation loop. So in this, the powder can be effectively dispersed. So you can avoid lumps formation here. So even if you want, we can have in tank design like uh, this is the design where in the uh, mixer itself we can have a rotor stator design coming up here. So here the, whenever it takes uh, powder from here, it effectively disperses the powder here. Okay. Here you can see another clear view how the rotor stator design will be. So this is, this comes in in tank homogenizer, inline homogenizer, in inline homogenizer also we have different range like. Uh, single stage, double stage and four stage. If you want, we can use bottom type of homogenizers and we have super series where you can go up to 4200 RPM speeds. So basically in homogenization, proper dispersion, deagglomeration, emulsification of powders will happen very, very effectively. <coughs> uh, in the uh, stator designs also, we have four types of design, like one is slotted, circle, square, arrow. These are used for various, various applications, basing on the, like, you no know, in some application, you as xanthan gum. For xanthan gum, you can use a slotted blades. So for different application, you, whatever you want, you can, you can. And these are all designed our own, uh, on our own CNC machines. After that, we have a new technology is liquid powder mixing. Here, if you can see, this product has in having a two inlets. Like if you see, this is comes on a trolley. It comes with a two inlets. One side, you will get a powder sucking. Other side, you will get a liquid. Both can be sucked from here and have a rotation. This gives another way of better dispersing of powder and liquid into the process. Okay, even if you want effective distance, there is one more mixer is added here to have a proper, proper dispersion of the powder inside. So to avoid a lot of lumps and your process time will be very, very faster compared to your standard cowl design. Suppose if your standard cowl design takes approximately one to one and a half hour, in this uh, liquid powder mix, it just happens within 15 to 20 minutes. 
so you can save your production time process here. The, the other thing, the finally, if after mixing there is a grinding, then we have a bead mills, like in the bead mills where you can go up to nanomicrons, where you can achieve less than one micron size by using a bead mills. So these are various type of bead mills we have. We have in uh, ceramic design, silicon carbide. We can also coming, we come up with a new series with a pegs design. This is a new technology which is used for the pigments. So in this we can offer different MOCs in SS304, SS316, ceramic, silicon carbide as well as in engineered plastic PU. We have a wide range. We started with 5 liters, 10 liters, up to 100 liters. We have a design in this. This is another series of uh, bead mills where we can offer. This is the various designs of horizontal bead mill. Uh, coming to before going to any production process, yes, we have a lab models for every range. Here we have the lab models. We have a laboratory multi shaft dispersor where in this single lab model you can use a cowl blade with the various blade designs of 1 inch, 2 inch, 4 inch as well as a basket mill design. So this is a multi shaft dispersor, we can use both the designs. So in this laboratory model, you can test from 1 liter to 5 liters. Again, we also have a laboratory bead mill of batch type. In this also, you can measure up to 200 li ml to 1 liter of batch bead mills. It's very compact, any laboratory applications, you can have this. Again, we have a attractor mill, lab attractor. This is also designed from up to 500 ml to 5 liters. We have laboratory horizontal dyno mill where you, this design capacity up to 1 liter. So whatever you, if uh, before going to production scale, whatever if you want to test any sample, how the final product will be. Yes, we have a laboratory manual which just comes with around 30, 40 gauges. You can just put it on a table, do whatever the applications you want to have. Even in our factory we have, somebody comes with uh, some sample, we can do in our laboratory test. Even lab, laboratory twin shaft models with a trifoil design, double shaft with cowl blade and we can also give it scrapper. This also range from 500 ml to 5 liters, these are all laboratory type of models. Then we also have laboratory sigma model where you can test up to 1 kg to 5 kg of Sigma design. This is for generally for putty application or high, uh, high viscosity construction chemicals, bondings like that. This is another lab mixer where you can test up to 20 liter to f uh, 50 liter with a 5 HP motor. This is also very compact in size. It comes with just uh, 15 to 20 kgs for all the laboratory applications. So we have why we develop a lot of laboratory models before developing any product we suggest to have at least a laboratory model test yourself if everything is perfect can go into a production scale. <coughs> then final thing sir just a uh, uh, bit of automation why we need uh, automation for any production scale or to ramp up your production. One is it reduces the manpower. Of, of course, operating, uh, having a 10, 15 labor, you can have two or three people can, you can run on the whole factory. Consistency of the product. See, one thing is when, when everything is fed through a computer process, your uh, percentages are designed as per that your pump operates and you, a particular consistency the product goes. But if you're operating with a man, you can't assure you that he's putting the same percentage of powder. There is always a problem of manual error. So the, you can't attain a consistency of the product. So you have a lot of advantage by going on automation. Higher production, if you want to have a higher production, yes. You can go for three shifts with the same labor, with the same efficiency, you can increase your higher production. Low wastage, because you can avoid spillage, wherever the powder spilling, everything can be avoided. Saving energy, because everything runs at a particular time and switch offs at a particular time. So you can have a lot of energy <laughs> saving. Complete traceability, you know what's happening, where if any error or anything, any final sample, wherever anything product is goes wrong, at least you can have a traceability where the things gone went wrong. Stock management, because everything is maintained and automatically you can assure of that what is the raw material and what is the finished stock management you can have. And the other thing is the safety factors, because once you inter interlock everything on a safety factor, 
So if something goes, something you have an alarm there. So a lot of safety can be uh, can be considered into this. This is another view of one of a plant. Like uh, this is a plant layout. By going automation, you can have a proper utilization of area efficiently. Raw material to finished good, you can uh, can be done. Then usage of gravity flow, less energy consumption. Efficient pumping and piping design, packing, right product, product selection, proper utility design can be done. This is one of the uh, already done, we have done, these are the one of the executions we have done with various factories. Just I will run through because these are the layouts we have already given and executed. Uh, this is a few P and ID diagrams how the mixers and TSDs are incorporated. This is another view where uh, basing on the structure and availability of the space we have designed. These are the various designs where uh, TSDs and mixers can be handled with the proper pipeline diagram. These are the few areas where we have done for, this is basically a solvent plant, but to share how, to show our workmanship, I'm just showing these pics. This is a pipeline design, so we clearly demarcate and what you are showing, see here it is on the SCADA. So in the SCADA you clearly, you can see which pipe is running, where the liquid is there, which one is running, which one is shut down. So everything you can have visibility on your monitor screen. Even if an MD wants to see, you can just connect to the PC, you can see what's going on in his factory. These are various layouts we have done for various factories. In consultancy, we are capable of, uh, we have our own tie-ups with various consultants across India to give a proper design. We do both water as well as solvent based, raw material to the, fin to the final finished goods management and after the clear exit path is also important. Once you pack everything, there should be a proper clear path to entry out. So we do everything properly, noting everything on your, uh, the detailed engineering and design layout. So just a bit of a solvent. Solvent is basically a flame proof. So here we take flame proof is everything is flame proof. So just I want to put a point the here, nothing more on that. That's end of my presentation. Any questions from the audience? Okay, thank you, sir. You now may take your seat. Thank you. Yeah, so question from our side. Uh, so lab twin shaft disperser generally uh, runs at what speed? Lab twin shaft disperser generally runs at what speed? 2000 RPM? No. Anything else? 14? No. Is it low speed or high speed? Yes, yeah, so around 250, we can give it to Surendra Vas, sir. No, no, but the question is framed by me, no? Okay, so the next question, okay, so we'll uh, skip for the one for this part, okay? So now uh, I would request uh, Professor Arun Jagtap sir to please felicitate uh, Satya Prakash ji with the bouquet and the memento. Thank you, Okay, so now I request uh, Professor Dr. Aryan Jatab sir to please uh, introduce our next speaker.
The second speaker is uh, Dr. Vijaya Mishra. He is a techno commercial professional having over 35 years of experience in the specialty chemicals. He has proven track record of delivering product and technologies successfully. Presently, he is affiliated to Ro uh, Rosary Biotech and he is serving there as Vice President, Technology and Business Development. Prior to this, he worked with a re uh, reputed organization like Daichi India, Exonobel, Glycol Limited, Clariant, then Unikema in various capacity. He has started his technical journey from the reputed BARC. He spent quite a considerable time of his career as research assignment in the University of USA and Europe. To his credit, he has guided students for their uh, graduate and undergraduate degree. His research interest includes topic like macro and micro emulsion technology, surfactancy, formulation technology and microstructure analysis, etc. He has more than 30 international publications to his credit and few process and product development patents. So here with, I hand over the mic to Dr. Mishra. Good afternoon. It feels good to be at the last speaker, last but because most of the things are finished. I can just thanks and thank you. Thank you everybody. Thank you uh, doctor for inviting me. My talk today will be a follow up of the last talk which I have given one and a half years back. I'm a person of surfactants working for 42 years and once you cross 65, you can think that uh, you are here to give people like students all these things. That's the feeling I have. I have learned a lot, so I, I want to give it back. This is what I think uh, most of the talk I heard from the morning uh, are my uh, customers, or somehow or other, they, they have been dealing with the something or other which is compatible or similar to my work. So why, what I'm doing, going to talk you, is the surfactant, lot of things has been talked. And one thing, this is the right time to point out that there is a misnomer between emulsion and dispersion. We are talking of dispersion in paints. Any question, anything, I'm ready to take that. We are talking of dispersion. It is a solid particle of paints, pigment, the pigments, which is dispersed by a medium into a workable liquid so that we can work and then we can form a film which is called paint. This paint is a film made with the pigment. Okay, uh, I'm attached to Rosary, uh, which is, excuse me. No, I just want to see. Do you want me to operate it? I can do that. You can do that. That will be easier. So, uh, the surfactants, I have believed it's a w real workers. Wherever things does not work, it will make it to work, be it your colorant, pigment dispersion, or your paint. Wherever it does not work, you just look at it, change the surfactant, or increase the surfactant, you work. Or be it biocide formulation also, everywhere. Next, please. So, if I'm in a paints category, this is with respect to solvent, it is water based solvent or water based paint or solvent based paint. Or if in times of application, it is decorative, industrial, or automotive. There are some specialty paints also. And if I talk of technology, Emulsion technology, dispersion technology, nanotechnology, polymer technology, silicon technology, all types of technology, whatever being talked from the morning to evening, it is included in this paint. Next. So, 
being a surface chemistry, I all want to declare that whatever we are talking about is the interface. Either we are disrupting an interface or we are creating an interface. You look at all the talks, whatever I have heard it. This is why understanding the surface formation or interface formation and disruption is very important. And that's why we should understand the surface chemistry. Next. So, I have talked and I want to tell it again. Paint is nothing but a fluid material transformed onto a substrate which formed a solid coating. And it is a continuous adherent. So, and our wish and desire is that that film should stay forever from the birth to the death of a person, which is never possible. Which, and this pigmented coating. So, what happens? I heard talking, wetting, spreading, all these things. It wets what? Tell me. It wets the wall surface. It wets the pigments. It spreads on the wall surface. And it should be compatible to not giving any brush mark. That is, the film should be elastic. And then it's quick drying and when it dries all the carrier which are the solvent they should evaporate without disrupting the paint that's paint so what are the components pigment extender true pigments or extender is also type of a pigment emulsion binder or uh, solvent water additives and the most complicated thing is the paint is made up of so many materials which are incompatible to each other. And in fact, it is a two-phase or a multi-phase system. When I'm taking a binder, there is a surfactant. When I'm taking a paint, there is a binder. When I'm taking this base, mill base into that, then I'm adding a bind, uh, surfactant. So all of them should be compatible. It's not that easy to be give a solution, one step solution. Sir, you are telling something. Somebody asks, give me the recipe, it's not. It's a jigsaw puzzle, you solve it. It may work, it may not work. This is the truth. So, I will be talking uh, other <coughs> additives. Other additives are many things. It's a wetting and dispersing agent, deforming, de aerating agent, Rheology modifier, corrosion inhibitor, dryer, anti-skinning agent, anti-floating agent, biocides, all of them contain surfactant. All of them. Or are pure surfactants. Or emulsifiers. So this is the molecule. And why it is? Because it has a thing that it's orient, so it reduces the surface tension and forms a globular system like a emulsion droplet or a micelle or a micro emulsion. So, but they are, even if I'm giving a structure of growth, they are in dynamic equilibrium, they form and break with a nanosecond lifetime. So I'm telling that it is a workers because it is everywhere it works and it works as a host or a carrier. It works as an active and an adjuvant. That is a performance enhancer. And they form multiple layers. They are the building block for making many things. Micelles, monolayers, reverse micelle, microemulsion, emulsion, liquid crystal, liposomes, water in oil, oil in water, everything. What it, the beauty is? They form the structure, microstructure. That is a structure at micro, microscopic level. So now, multiple roles of the surfactant in paint. What paints is, paint is being manufactured, paint is being stored, paint is being applied, then post storage also how it is being, all this thing is being managed, controlled by the surfactant. And moreover, which has been never looked at, neglected, what's the loss when somebody is painting? 
the imaginary dream is the for the painter is when they are painting nothing should be lost not a drop should come down and that should be lost so everything is can be managed by surface time so this i don't have to there are different types of surfactants uh, non ionic anionic polymeric and there is if you surfactants is a controlling per parameters for the paints formulation and this what are the critical things choice of surfactant surfactant doses nature of surfactant non ionic to anionic ratio when i am saying this i have covered the first part choice of surfactant in my first lecture today i will be not talking of choice of the surfactant i will giving you a stress which people how to make a manufacture a surfactant how to get a surfactant which will work in your formulation and i will talk about the a new surfactant how it is really an user friendly surfactant to solve lot of our problem so just a uh, example so wetting agent it's a two types wetting agent and dispersing agent wetting lot of talk has been done it should wet the surface and that's why what is the dose and they are usually wetting agents are non ionic dispersing agents are anionic or polymeric so the surfactant dose depends on the type of pigment depends on pvc and pigment to binder ratio one the second thing is that surfactant is such a critical is you overdose it it's bad if you underdose it it's bad it specially affects the rheology i don't mind being stopped or asked any question in the middle also okay uh i don't think i have to talk this is known take the surfactant make the mill base this is your peculiar recipe take the mill base into put into this mixer or blender and make the final paint and so there are a lot of instruments that has been so that this can be used whether greenfield project what are the things is used what is the, can be used in the lab but i want to make one point that there is a way to reduce the time i have expressed that in my last presentation lot of people do it whether you make the mill base then you go to the blend but there is a way to make it reduce the time that's called two stage emulsification or two stage dispersion if you refer to my presentation earlier you will see that and that's i am referring to all of because there are a lot of presentation about the mill base by that you can use a lot of less surfactants and what is happen make concentrated emulsion then next stage is dilute that so the use of surfactant is less the use of energy in making the paint is less and it becomes very cost effective so be it paint or colorant these are the three stages you put pigments mix well and then you grind it and get it the mill base and then you put it in the bead mill and then you get the colorant so i will just pass it on because it has been talked many times only thing is that the factor which goes into is the time and energy so it's a pigment waiting grinding stage stabilization and pigment and suspension so one thing it will be just to give an example is the black powder which is not at all soluble if you as a correct and good amount of surfactant it can be emulsified and it becomes very clearly in the agrochemical dispersion bluish tinge type of thing in the black pigment also you will get some so next is the stabilization this is talked about this is the dispersion process wetting next is separation that is deagglomeration and the stabilization the stabilization happens and all of them happens at one 
then it's not that first it will wait, then it will separate all these things. So these are all, all happens together. So this is the electrostatic. So we load the pigments with the surfactant molecule to create stabilization. That's why it will not agglomerate again. So where the electrostatic comes from anionic and the steric interest comes from the non-ionic. Non-ionics are head, with head group, which is highly hydrated. That's why it creates non-ionic. That's why there is a cloud point. So, so if there is a stabilization process is bad, then the gloss is poor and color strength is poor. So in real life, there is nothing called one surfactant. We use mixed surfactant. Mixed surfactant always creates synergy, and that's why it is better to use the mixed surfactant system. And in the mixed surfactant, one is anionic, another is non ionic. So example of non-ionics are alcohol ethoxylate or alcohol ethoxylate propoxylate no, and non-ionics are wetting and dispersing agent, anion, sorry, non-ionics are wetting agents or anionic are dispersing agent. I'm going fast because these are the things I have already covered in my last talk. So I can manage the surfactant based on the HLB. So low HLB is good wetting agent, high HLB is good dispersing agent. So non-ionic wetting agent example also are there. <coughs> so anionics which are used in the paints and coating are polyacrylates, polymeric, sulfate, sulfur succinate, and phosphate ester. The last one, phosphate ester, I will discuss in detail. So why phosphate esters? I don't know whether three people are using it or not. Uh, especially I'm addressing to the uh, industries. These are because their alkali stability is good, their good wetting properties, anti-static and emulsion properties. They via what happens in the phosphate ester, the beauty is there is a switch. I can change them, same surfactant, I can change them to the wetting agent and dispersing agent. That is, you will see how. So re the reaction is simple. You take P2O5, you take alcohol, alcohol ethoxylate, diff many type of alcohol, and you get the phosphate ester with some phosphoric acid. And there is one phosphating agent which gives the phosphates and the base material, like alcohol, alcohol ethoxylate, or any other things which can be phosphated. So phosphating agents are P2O5, polyphosphoric acid, phosphorus oxytrichloride, phosphorus pentaphenyl. Best material is alcohol, low molecular weight. Even for IPA, I can make phosphate ester. Also TDA, I can make so even alcohol ethoxylate. Take alcohol, make the ethoxylate, then the, do the phosphation. So conditions are temperature control, concentration, rate of addition, and present of, presence of oxygen has to be controlled. I am giving you the manufacturing process. The phosphating agents are different. There are many, and most prof preferred is P2O5, based on the reaction rate. And thumb rules is to get the final acid value of increase by 10 to 12, we should use 1% as P2O5. How much P2O5 is to be added, that is what Maintain approximately one is to three ratio of P2O5 to alcohol, alcohol ethoxylate. Critical operating parameter is temperature, management of exotherm, and rate of addition of P2O5, time of digestion. So the synthesis, I take alcohol, alcohol ethoxylate, add P2O5. P2O5 addition has to be slow. There is no need of catalyst. If at all, the small amount of phosphorus acid can be used. Then the next step is when you are adding P2O5, we have to make sure the temperature does not go beyond 40 degrees. Then what is happening? Then P2O5 addition will be controlled. Then all these things should be happened in the nitrogen position. Because oxygen there, it will not work. Rate of P2O5 
they have added and you will see that the color has changed and you are buying phosphotester anionic surfactant, the batch to batch variation unless manufacturing is not done in a controlled way. And you think that one batch will work, one batch will not work. These are the, then we get the phosphotester, then we get the, uh, we, this has to be neutralized. The neutralization can be done by caustic, ammonia, or TEA. Many times, phosphotester neutralized with uh, caustic will be gel, will give you a gel. Small addition of ammonia will clear uh, your problem. And the phosphotester can be made with TEA, MEA, or DEA. And when you do that, the foam property comes down like anything. But waiting hampers. So at the end, we get monoester, diester, residual alcohol, and residual phosphoric acid. Now understand, three things are there. Monoester is a waiting agent. Diester is a, uh, a dispersing agent. So what do we want? Dispersing and mono, dispersing and waiting agent. Especially I am addressing to you, sir, uh, if you use this, you don't have to use the waiting agent. Like people use first when they are making the uh, colorant, take the all four or five components and then they use the anionic to make it a dispersing and then add the waiting agent, which are the, they use uh, anionic like polyacrylate or styrenated phenolethoxylate. Then at the end, they use nonyl phenolethoxylate or apo free thoxylate. This is, an, this is a, you use phosphotester, that problem will not be there. And then, can I get a pen to write somewhere something? So, what happens? Please look into it very attentively. At this point, I have started charging to my alcohol or alcohol itself to P2O5. So, what happens? It starts. This is the amount of monoester and a diester. This is first. What will happen? There will be digest, not no digestion. I will be adding P2O5 to this. When I stop it, the P2O5 has reacted with alcohol, so you expect monoester. One monoester will form, then monoester will form, then no, sir. First, what will form is diester. Monoester will be given. Diester will come down, monoester will increase. Contrary to all expectations, when we charge P2O5 into alcohol, what we get is the diester. And this time, this is the addition time. This is the time it is coming down, it is there. This is the product which is required for paints and colorants. That means the product where monoester and diester is one is to one works. So all the beds, if you are using it, get a method of measuring monoester and diester. Don't use such things. If there is a supplier, ask them 
to give the method or take it from me. This is time. This is mono. Another one is time. Sivasta, you can tell yes or no. So, so everybody thinks that oh, mono will form first. Let me take it as no, die ester will form first. So then it will be mono. So what we want is a mono and die mixture which is 50 50. So this is the time. The manufacturer will not have enough patience or time to get to this point and give it to your product which will work. Okay. Now beyond this, suppose that if it, this is usually, don't quote me everywhere, but I am saying that it is usually two and a half hours to three hours. Beyond this, what happens? And this is the free phosphoric acid water. Free phosphoric acid ka dunga to, so initially it will work, and it will be minimum here. This is free phosphoric acid. I've given you one equation. If you want a acid value of 10, 10 to 12, then take 1% T2O5. That means if I want 250 at the my final acid value, so I should use 250. So then I should use 25% of T2O5 and alcohol should be 75%. Okay. Please, these are all important factors. If you are using it, use phosphotester, but what phosphotester you should use, you should be aware of it. So the benefits of phosphotester, as such, this have is other surfactant. It's an efficient dispersing agent in water <coughs> gone coatings, good weighting properties, anti-rusting because the metal adhesion to the phosphate ester like it is anchoring, it's not easily removable. Polymeric re rheology modifier, it's compatible, good polymer ad film adhesion and metallic surfaces. Besides this, it is compatible to many surfactant. This is so this can be TDA ethoxylate phosphate ester, 2-EHEO phosphate ester, and LA. These are the example and these are the properties. Anything, any question you have with respect to phosphate ester, you can let me know. I have given my number and the email address in the first slide. Then I want to add, like always, uh, whatever looks like yellow is not gold. The surfactant is not always workhouse. By adding surfactant, we create problem also. So negative effect is water and moisture resistance goes down. Dirt pickup increases. Surfactant leaching takes place. And of course, you are in the hand of surfactant manufacturer and EO price. Ethylene oxide prices goes up, it's so volatile, so having a cost for three months, cost management is always a problem. And I want to, this is one of the things that I'm having a surfactant coming from titanium dioxide. It comes 
with a polymer and then I am getting a green pigment with a colorant, there is a surfactant. This surfactant should be very much compatible with the polymer. I told surfactant, surfactant interaction has to be good, correct, and surfactant polymer interaction has to be good. So I work for Rosary. In case you need any support for paints, you can contact Mr. Himan Sugar. This is the email and the phone number. In case of additives, pigment, and colorants, that is a surfactant which is required for the colorant manufacture or the pigment, please contact him. And technical issues, always you can come. I love to respond to your question. Thank you. Now also you can ask me. Thank you, sir. Any question from the audience? Okay, so actually we are skipping the questions for uh, this part because we are already running late, okay? So uh, now I would request uh, Dr. Aryan Jagtab, sir, to please felicitate our speaker. We'll do the felicitation together. Take it. We'll see you Okay, no problem. So I'll introduce you the last speaker for today's program. He's Dr. Prashant Khobragade. He did his PhD from University Jagao. And right now he is working as a manager R&D in Anuvi Chemicals. He's having five years of experience. And uh, his research expertise are emulsions, coating, polymeric materials, formulations, nanomaterial, nanotechnology. He has published 10 research paper in international journals with a back factor of 2.8. He has same, almost same, same number of international conferences. And he is being awarded as young scientist by VD Good Professional Association in August 2020. And he is also a member to many organizations. With this, I hand over the mic to Dr. Prashant. So before we begin, uh, I request Dr. Harish Agrawal sir to please felicitate Deshmukh sir. Okay. You can continue sir. Okay. Good evening to all. Uh, uh, thank you, Professor Jagtab, sir, for a wonderful uh, introduction. So I'm not taking more time uh, because this is my uh, this is today's last uh, technical presentation. So my topic about the presentation is quite emulsion polymer for architectural paints. The today's my presentation is quite uh, um, combination with quite academic parts, some technical parts, and with consideration of some industrial parts into the regular activities which followed in the industrial parts into the. Uh, category of emulsions for architectural paints. So it includes importance, characterization, applications, and advancement into the uh, uh, emulsions. So the outline is about the quite introduction, background about waterborne coatings, about emulsion polymers, characteristics of emulsion polymer, the selection criteria of different elements for the emulsion polymer, architectural coatings, and the some important factors which affect the properties of the emulsion polymer and the te technology trends into the emulsion polymers. So you all people and I, I also working into the decorative segment from long time, you have more experience than me. And we are mostly think, talking about 30, 40, 50 years from decorative segment. But I tell you the decorative paints and the architectural coatings is not, we are working from last 100, 200 or 300 years. This is the technology which established very scientifically and technologically before 600 BC. So you can imagine the Ajinta Caves near to the Aurangabad, that caves itself have a very uh, uh, aesthetic looks of architectural paintings into the caves. That paintings is manufactured or are prepared before 600 BCs. So you can imagine the how 
this uh, water bone or architectural coatings uh, uh, developed earlier and which types of additives or you can say uh, the technology people use that time so that still it's look a better as compared to uh, nowadays technology so that is the very interesting part about the uh, uh, or quite the reference part about the uh, technology for water based uh, decorative segment or architectural coatings so the general uh, definition about the uh, your coatings or, or, or surface coatings so it is a quite combination of some layers with the, it should be like metals wood or other concrete surfaces where we are making a priming or we are making a final coat or top coat of the uh, some paints or, uh, or water based paint or maybe a solvent based paint yeah. so at the nowadays people are mostly moving towards the water based technology it should be related with metals or you should be related with the decorative segment or architectural segments the major factor to consider about the architectural coat uh, a water based coating is based on the it have low voc contents it have low risk of fire hazards it is reducing worker exposure to the solvent vapors with the consideration of uh, some other environmental uh, consideration factors so basically what is emulsion polymer right so we are talking about the or number time of customer talking about the emulsions or or uh, latex so it is the consideration of styrene acrylic pure acrylic sbr a lot of different types of monomer are considered to manufacture the emulsion polymer or latex is but basically emulsion polymer is what emulsion polymer can be defined a very uh, simply it is a dispersion a latex of about 100 to 1000 nanometer particle size in aqueous aqueous dispersion media they are polymer dispersion and by technical terms they are uh, uh, stabilized with the surfactants or other stabilizers as per the requirement and application part of the customer requirement so basically yeah so, so the uh, whenever we are talking about um, emulsion polymers so uh, the emulsion polymers properties is not only basically based on the composition of uh, the monomers it is quite related with the application part with the performance criteria but number of times the, uh, the the process which we select to make a emulsion polymer that is also important part for the uh, properties so where number of times you are talking about in micro emulsion polymerization have particle size ranging about 100 to 1000 or 100 to 500 so that is a very important basic part for emulsions so main important part about the uh, emulsion polymers in micro emulsion polymer where particle size is ranging from 100 to 200 or 300 so whenever we use that emulsion into the paint formulations all other ingredients into the paint formulation are in micro forms more than the nanometer size right so when it like uh, we make a grinding or other dispersion so there is a chances of other agglomeration parts so and it will be affect on the properties of uh, the paint formulations and other final applications so the nano emulsions you can say micro emulsion or nano emulsion it will give you a better dispersion and grinding with your other ingredients so that's why the uh, micro emulsion polymerization processes are majorly considered for the uh, industrial manufacturing processes for the emulsion so how that emulsion polymer are made in general a emulsion polymer system consists of a dispersing medium monomer emulsifier initiator a stabilizers and other some post additive material the monomers are only slightly soluble in water they form droplets that are suspended and stabilized by the emulsifier that is the emulsifier molecules associate and form micelle that surround small amounts of monomer the remaining monomer is dispersed in the small droplets right so this is classified in mini and micro emulsion polymerizations so in that micro emulsion polymerization is consist with the importance factor with uh, it gives the low particle Uh, formation into the polymerization system but itself that micro emulsion polymerization or that polymerization consists with two uh, methods one is it is in oil in water emulsions or maybe it is a water in oil emulsions so the major two difference about this type of emulsion is what in oil in water the monomers are only slightly soluble in the continuous phase with the water instead they form droplets that are suspended and stabilized by the emulsifier into the water in oil emulsion 
and emulsion polymerization can also be carried out with water miscible hydrophilic monomers such as acrylamides or other like methacrylic acids which disperse into the continuous hydrophobic oil phase. So there is also some other characteristics uh, which are mostly considering into the emulsion polymer. So that is nothing but the solid content, particle size, coagulum into the products, rheology or viscosity, glass transition temperature, residual monomer and other molecular weights of the emulsion polymers. So rather than these, uh, some basic characteristics, uh, I'll talk further about detail in, in each. So the viscosity is a major part for the emulsions, uh, basically. And after that, TG is, uh, and MFFT is the other part uh, as the part of consideration with application. So the viscosity or rheology of an emulsion polymer is a complex property that depends on mostly solid content of emulsions, uh, particle size distributions, the pH ranges and the particle surface charge and organic content into the aqueous phase amongst other. So whenever we are going for to like synthesis a emulsion polymer, so we have some basic uh, criteria or consideration how we uh, go for the um, to synthesize the emulsions. So which monomer we have to select with other elements or stabilizers or auxiliaries or which polymerization technique we have to select. Because that monomer consideration is not only a part uh, for the properties, but the selection of polymerization technique is also the major consideration part for the uh, performanceable properties for the emulsions. So these are some general consideration about the monomers uh, initiators. I'm not going very deep into on this slide because it is quite very theoretical general parts. Uh, to selection of the monomers, uh, initiators, surfactants and other, other ingredients, uh, whatever the post-polymerization or pre-polymerization that use in emulsion polymerization. So whenever we are going for selection of some specific um, emulsions, so that should be our styrene acrylic emulsions, pure acrylic emulsions or acrylic emulsions or uh, vinyl acrylate emulsions, any other emulsions. Number of times, like uh, I am also working with R&D and technical services, number of times customer asking me, we need uh, styrene emulsion with 50 solid. We need styrene emulsion with 40 solids. So I am I'm saying them ki we have 50 solid styrene 100 of grades. Which grades you need? Customer saying we need 50 solid acrylic emulsions. So we have thousands of or hundreds of grades of acrylic emulsions with 50 solids, which you need. What is your purpose? Where you want to use it? So that is quite considerable part. So all emulsions is with same like styrene or maybe in acrylic with the same solid, but the compositional part of all emulsion is different. So that is with uh, consideration of TG or that is with consideration of final application of emulsion, the use of emulsion, the final properties requirement into the paint or other like basic characteristics mostly considered as a MFFT. That all the part consideration for the uh, emulsions. So there is some uh, uh, more important factors which affects on the properties of performance and end application of the uh, uh, architectural coatings. Uh, with the help of emulsion that is one VOC that volatile organic compound should be less other it, the volatile aromatic hydrocarbons and some other ingredients uh, shall not contain like heavy metals, FUOs freeze and diethyl glycor methyl ether. So the very important part about the emulsion polymer when you are considering or selecting emulsion polymer. So and when emulsion is considered, emulsion polymer is considering with other polymer materials. Like, so whenever we are talking about polymers and some other properties, the basic important functions in polymer is a TG. There is a glass transition temperature or above the certain temperature and below temperature where that polymer start to change their phase. So when you are considering TG with other polymer materials, other plastics materials or other rubbery like materials, so TG is a direct considerable part For, uh, with the end applications of final product, uh, with the processing characteristics of uh, that material. But when we are considering about uh, a coating and emulsions, so rather than TG, MFFT is a major considerable part. 
but with MA50, TGA is a secondary considerable part because, see, whenever we are considering about TG, a theoretical TG into the emulsions, but that theoretical TG can't be maintained during polymerizations. So sometimes the poly, the, the TG will increase. If, if you consider your theoretical TG should be like 50, but during polymerization your TG will increase like 60. If the particle size is very fine, it need more energy to move forward for higher degree. So your TG will increase. Sometimes if you use some more plasticizer of monomers like acrylamide or other things, so that time your TG will reduce. So never that in polymer, during polymerization, theoretical TG is not able to maintain. So that's why in emulsions, people are talking about M50. So M50 is nothing but the lowest temperature at which collision occurs sufficiently to form a continuous polymer film or coating film. So that's why M50 is a very important factor into the emulsion rather than TG. But there is a correlation, plus minus three or four degree. The TG is uh, 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 slightly lower than M50. But M50 is an important part rather than TG. And collision aids are used also assist in the film forming. Sometimes a number of like addition of more collision agents into the emulsion also like uh, use the low M50 with high TG. Like some number of emulsions, they are not able to form a film. So we are adding more collision agents. So that time what happened, your TG is M50 using very low and uh, you are maintaining TG as it is with higher side. Sometimes with respect to your uh, end application of the um, polymers. So the ma major requirements of collision aids is what? The collision aids should have compatibility and active solvents for base polymer for the systems. In the case of efficiency, the amount of collision aid required to provide desired film formation related to collision aids uh, like glass point. Another is a low rate of evaporation and the low solubility in water. So how collision uh, affects uh, into the uh, emulsion polymer or film formation? The particles are soft enough, they will fuse when the particles collapse and form a film. If in the emulsion, if it is the particles are not able to collapse it, it create a very hard film and that film will quite unstable and it create a, um, a like cracky structure onto the uh, surface. So that's why the oh, like film formation mechanism is a very important part into the emulsions and that part. So based on consideration, we'll use other uh, collision agents. So the mechanism is what the particles get into close contact and start to pack, where polymer particles deformation particles are deformed and packed. The film formation, like polymer chains entangle and particle boundaries is disappear, and the polymer interdiffusion leading to a continuous stable film. So in the case of drying mechanism of architecture like the paints or emulsions, it is important that the application drying and collision conditions are co very controllable. So in important parameters like temperature, relative humidity, like ventilations and some other factors. So nowadays there is also major technology trends of waterborne coating like with the help of uh, like customer and market requirements, technology efficiency, environment, health, safety, and performance. So nowadays, people are mostly moving toward the multifunctional type of emulsions. Means a single emulsions, like I'll, earlier I told you, people are asking about emulsions about the solid base, not about the chemistry based or application based or other based. So we are trying to move towards the multifunctional uh, emulsions. A single emulsion can use into the different type of paint formulations with the, for different applications. So based on the your paint formulations. Right, where we developed some pure acrylic emulsions, uh, the name of Anukril C930, that emulsion is used for uh, elastomeric uh, architectural paint, it can use for cool roof coating, it can use for waterproofing, it can use for uh, crack bridging applications, it can be used for your making a crack bridging paste, it can be used for anti-carbonation application, as well as it can be used for waterproofing as well as dome proofing. A single emulsion based on your pen formulation, you can move wherever you want. 
So that kind of uh, technology trends nowadays people are mostly uh, asking. Like I have, I need single emulsion. I am working for waterproofing. I want to move with different type of products based on the single emulsions. So other part of emulsion people are mostly uh, talking about the dirt pickup resistance emulsions, uh, where we have anucryl uh, CP180S, that is silane modified acrylic emulsions. It have hard glossy film, high gloss transition temperature, superior dirt pick resistance, excellent extra durability and UV resistance, excellent water and alkali resistance. So you can see the quite comparison of market product of an anucryl CP180S, where you can compare the how it have dirt pickup resistance, a simple lab test we carried out. So another one important and major uh, segment like today's um, morning session, uh, I forget the name of uh, gentleman. He told about the requirement of anti afflorance type of paints into the market because the whatever the salt deposition is formed into the construction sites, it is very big hazardous for the other architectural type of, of paints. So we have a nano emulsions for anti afflorance anti afflorance paints. The particle size of this emulsion is averagely 50 nanometer. So you can imagine how the particle size when I show the slight comparison of the uh, ranges of other um, particles and, and uh, in ranges, the 50 nanometer um, particle size used for the anti afflorance paint of application where with the different solid. So it has styrene acrylic emulsions with a very fine particle size. Uh, it have transparent high glossy and hard film good anti afflorance excellent alkali and water resistance, eco-friendly formal lead, and it has very low VOC. So you can see the paint made by uh, uh, a normal emulsions and paint made by uh, the very fine particle emulsions, how it will give the anti afflorance properties and alkyl, alkali resistance um, as compared to other emulsions. So nowadays people are uh, moving uh, in anti afflorance application, people are not moving with paint, people are moving with primers. They make an anti afflorance primer and then after that they apply other paints. Other, uh, the very interesting category of advancement uh, about the self cross linking emulsions. So, in that self cross linking emulsion, we have categories left. It is have styrene acrylic as well as pure acrylic. The very uh, uh, beauty of this emulsion is what? It have low TG emulsions, but once when it dried, it works at like a high TG emulsion. This TG is like 12 to 13, but once it dry, it works like it have 40 TG. That much of uh, hardness it have after uh, drying. And al also, uh, it can mostly be recommended for uh, stain applications or stain resistance of paints. Like we are like turmeric, teas, coffees, that which you daily is into the, our home house. So I have very one, beautiful video I will show you how it run.
there were uh, very advanced category uh, into the architectural paints like opaque emulsions, opaque polymers. Recently, we developed one Anukuril uh, OP2023. In architectural paints, major element for uh, cost optimization is uh, TiO2 because it have the highest cost as compared to other ingredients into the paint formulations. So, and uh, the cost is also uh, not stable for the TiO2s. So, the new segment to 20% uh, or 30% TiO2 replacement into the paint formulation is a opaque polymer. It is a styrene acrylic of emulsions, which by chemistry, it is a core shell of technology for the emulsions, where that core is filled with water into the emulsion form. Once it dried, that hollow parts, core parts are filled with air, and the, that uh, particles refractive index is matched with the refractive index of TiO2. So where that emulsion parts, uh, you can replace 20%, 30% of parts of TiO2 into the paint formulation, by which you can reduce a per liter 5 to 6 rupees in a paint. So based on only a 20-30% part replacement of TiO2. And also with the help of uh, op optimization of other segment, you can also reduce the cost of your paint. Where opaque polymer emulsions have cost efficient replacement of TiO2, it have excellent hiding and improved light scattering, improves gloss and storage stability. See, this is a mechanism how it works with the refractive index of TiO2. So this is a quite a general example of uh, paint made by, oh, with opaque polymer and paint made by uh, the, as it is TiO2 with 100% and 20% part replacement of TiO2. The both are how you comparably show the uh, hiding into the paint formulations. So thank you for uh, giving us chance to present here. Thank you, sir, for the wonderful insights. So with this technical session is now over, I now request Dr. Arjun Jatab, sir, to please felicitate our speakers. So first, I would like to call upon uh, Dr. Prashant uh, Khobra Gade, sir. Thank you, sir. Next, I request Dr. Bijoy Bijaya K. Mishra, sir, to please come forward. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next, I request Deshmukh, sir, to please come forward. It's done. Oh. Thank you, sir. Now to conclude the event, uh, I would like to call upon Dr. S.K. Watts, sir, for the vote of thanks. Very heavy crowd is sitting over here. Yes. <coughs> One important uh, announcement, those people who have not received the certificate, they will be getting in short, in the shortest possible time, it will be posted at your residential address, okay? So feel free that you are going to get the certificate. Thank you.
But those certificates which are available, we can hand over those certificates to you right away, right? So the name is Niranjan Burte. Thank you, sir. Next is Kiran Kumar Raju, sir. Please come forward. Okay. Thank you, Komal. This is very typical job I have got today. धन्यवाद करना आसान बात नहीं है, बहुत मुश्किल काम है धन्यवाद करना। This is wonderful certificate course is decorated by you. Your kind support has make this event a great success. I thanks to our speakers, they have delivered very good speeches to us, very educational. An informative speech we have got here. Thanks all speakers who are present here. I thanks our chief guest, Dr. A. B. Pandit, guest of honor, Ashok Gupta ji, guest of honor, Sri Hardev Singh sir, and other than dignitaries who are ornamental of this show. I thanks to our sponsor. They have given support to us. Raw material partners, technology partners. Without your support, we can't do this great function. This is very good support we have got from your side. I really thanks to you. Our delegates, our student of ICT for your great coordination and management, ICT for guests, they have given venue to us. I really thanks to ICT, special thanks to Dr. R. N. Jagtap. They have given fully hearted coordination to us. Thank you, thank you very much. Now I request Dr. Harish Agrawal sir to please uh, present a certificate to Gagandip Bansal sir. Gagandip Bansal sir. No, I guess he's not there. Okay. Okay, so with this I declare uh, on behalf of the Surface Coding Society, uh, the event is now over. Oh, sorry. Thank you everyone for gracing the event, invigorating all our spirits and making it the grand success. Thank you, thank you so much. Whom does this belongs to? Paint drive. Silver sand disk. Okay. 